Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please, you are all welcome. You are all welcome. You are all welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining this morning. Please share, invite your loved ones. Uh, we are here to release the full session one, no one, first session. No one, you are welcome. Um, Please tell your, tell your loved one, we are live. We are live now. Tell your loved ones, we are live now. Please put a comment down. Let's know where you are calling from. Let's know where you are joining us from. Please put a comment down. Put a comment down. Invite your loved ones. We invite your loved ones. Save the woman is alive. Is we are live? You are live on YouTube. Invite your loved ones. Invite your loved ones. Invite your loved ones. We are live now. We are live now. Invite your loved ones. Invite your loved ones. Invite your loved ones. Yes, invite your loved ones. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Let's know where you're joining from. We will be starting shortly. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. We are live. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. We are live now. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. We are starting shortly. 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 Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. We are starting shortly now. We are starting shortly now. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. We're starting shortly now. Thank you for joining. Please invite your loved ones. Tell them we are live now. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe. Press the subscribe button. Help us to subscribe. Help us to subscribe. I post to subscribe. You are starting now shortly. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. You are all welcome. Good morning. 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 You are all welcome. 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 Good morning. You are welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. You're all welcome. You are welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. You are all welcome. You are all welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. You are all welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. You are all welcome. Thank you for joining. Please, please share, share. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to share. 
invite your loved ones. Don't forget to share, invite your loved ones. We're glad to see you. Thank you for joining. 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 We'll be starting shortly now. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Network of people of African descent. She's going to come here and just share with us a Google message real brief, briefly. We also have a Google message by Nana Hadja, which I've already said hi to her of the Salifu Dalgarki Foundation. We also have a Google message and to officially declare the course open, our very own Miss or Auntie Nana as I love to call her, Nana Asante. And she is the secretary of the International Decade for People and Descent Violation UK, iPad Violation. She's going to give it, um, uh, declare us open with a goodwill message. That will shortly be followed by an actual commencement of our first module delivered by our very own Pastor Mrs. Chika Amadi of the Family Mediation Center. We're so excited. I can't, I can't even wait, madam. I have to tell you, I don't know what you're going to be sharing, but I'm so excited to be empowered. Who isn't, right? I mean, who isn't? I'm so excited to be empowered. And then the closing remarks by our very own founder, Comrade Ola Lincoln. I hope this is very clear to everyone. Ola, are you happy with that? That's perfectly fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Shall I stop sharing and just go back to normal stream then? Fantastic. I can see everybody again. Hello, hello, hello. I see some more people have joined us since then. All I see is this safe to just carry on, right? What's the time? We, we can start now, please. Can we start now, please? I'm absolutely for that. Yeah, I'll mute my music and then crack on. Can I just ask everybody to mute themselves so when anyone is talking, you cannot unmute yourself. I think that would be okay. <laughs> Esther, if you want to talk, you need to unmute yourself, okay? everyone we've started recording so i i think it's safe to just begin that's it music off a very warm welcome to you our dear guests of honor and our highly esteemed participants volunteers and my fellow team members of save the woman welcome to our own very own for the first time ever in the whole history of mankind Afrocentric Parenting Skills Course 101. It's been proudly organized by Save the Woman in partnership with Family Mediation Center. You can appreciate how challenging the journey has been in putting resources together, particularly in the area of supporting children and the families of children in care. It is on this note we would love to appreciate the funding support received from the County Durham Community Foundation through the National Emergency Trust Fund and the National Lottery Community Fund through Her Majesty's Government Department for Digital Sports and Media. We say a very big thank you to them. Thank you. At this juncture, I, as Director of Sopranolim Esther, I would love to hand over to our very own Comrade Ola Lincoln, who is also the founder of Save the Woman for his founder's remarks. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome every one of you once again to this uh, landmark achievement of events. As Save the Man, as you all know, uh, we started in 2015 and was registered here in England and Wales in 2018. Our primary goal is to empower the female inmates and also support family in general by providing advocacy support. And recently, we've been supporting families of children in care. And through our research, and even from evidence from reports from our local environment, we realized it takes four times more likely for African child to be taken into care compared to white British and three times more likely compared to ethnic minority. We could see from report as well, we are overrepresented in prison, most especially the children from care, and as well, the criminal justice system. So this has been an issue to us, and we believe the only way we could support and provide necessary and required understanding is for people to understand the system we are living in through empowerment, through education. This is essence why we come up with this project, which we call Building Bridges, Breaking Barriers, by promoting parental values to rebuild homes. As we all know that it takes a village to raise a child. And as one of our directors just mentioned now, it has been challenging to put resources together. But we really appreciate the support we receive from our local partner organization, particularly from the National Lottery Fund to the government funding to support this coronavirus situation pandemic. And as well, there is support we receive from the County Durham through the funding for coronavirus through National Emergency Trust. We believe coming together, empowering our community will give us a way to understand the system and to provide the necessary care and support for our children in order to increase and give a life chances that will make them to have a better representation. On this note, I would like to welcome you once again. Thank you for giving time to be part of this. And we look forward to the successful completion of this course. Thank you. Thank you so much. I saw Pastor Chika giving a round of applause there. Thank you so much, Paula. That was really heartfelt. We, we are here to partner with this vision and we appreciate this. Without further ado, we have a very special guest here, Councillor Paper. I've actually met her before. She is a mother. She is a social worker. She is a counselor. She is someone who supports any any kind of achievement, any kind of promotion, and she's here to give a good message. Counselor, favor over to you, ma'am. Please just unmute yourself, and um, we're happy to have you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, um, O N E. Even though I don't like calling you O N E. <laughs> yes. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to, to come together again um, after the event, wonderful event we had in Middlesbrough in March. So I'm really pleased that we're able to come together to organize this. Um, it's a, a, a worthy follow up of that particular event. Um, yes, I'm delighted that um, Pastor Chica has um, partnered with us um, in this journey. But before I get to that point, I want to give due honor and respect to Auntie Nana, um, who actually instilled uh, in me the desire to, to help our people. Um, pe people like Auntie Nana are role models uh, in our community. So we must honor her. It's, it's very it's, you know, there is something about us as a people. Um, sometimes we forget the people ahead of us. But we shouldn't do that. Um, in this instance, I really want to say thank you, Auntie Nana, because um, you showed me what leadership looked like by making your way to my house 
when you have not even met me in person. Um, I really, really appreciate that. And I want to say thank you, Ma, for doing that. Um, so because I, I met her, I was able to um, also get involved with uh, working with uh, Olaleko to, to support us in this journey. Like you said in the introduction, I'm a social worker by training and, and I still work with children and young people. But now I, I'm a camps manager in NHS, but I also run my own uh, firm, Destiny Creations, which um, is the route through which I used to teach um, uh, issues of child protection, safeguarding, parenting, um, domestic violence, and mental health. Um, but I'm also a local councillor here, and I'm the, I'm the deputy group leader of Labour Group now. I'm sure Auntie Nana would be happy to know that I'm the deputy group leader now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's been a journey for me. Um, but one thing I want to leave us with is we need to speak for ourselves. We, we, we need to stop allowing other people to create the narrative for us. And one of the ways to do that is what we're doing now. We, we need to create a narrative about our lives and our experiences. I was speaking in the council, I moved the emotion on Tuesday night on the impact of coronavirus on BEM communities. And one of my, because I'm the only African council in the council, one of my colleagues, wanted to minimize my motion. And I said to him, it's arrogance for you to think you have greater knowledge of people's life experience and the people who experience it themselves. So it's pure arrogance. So I said, we will not allow it to continue because it is our own lived experience. And you need to listen to us because it is our own lived experience. So I challenged them on the data they used um, to populate their equality impact assessment, which had no data for African Caribbean community in this town that I live in. Yet we have 5%, 5.8% of the population registered as black African people as a 2011 election. And I won my first election here in 2015. But in 2020, my council used data to populate their equality impact assessment that did not contain anybody that looked like me. So I said, that is utter arrog arrogance and making a, a whole community to look very invisible. And so I'll bring it back to us. What we are doing today is to take the future in our hands, to create a different narrative for our children. And how we do it is by what we are doing today and the six subsequent weeks that this course will run. As a social worker, it pains me when I see the way our children end up sometimes, both in school and in care. Hertfordshire has some of the highest exclusion of school children. The highest number is from the black community. Yet we represent less than 10% 10, 10 of the total of Hertfordshire. So why is that so? Black people in England represent only 4% of the entire, um, entire population. So why are we having that significant number of Black people in criminal justice system, in the care system, under the Mental Health Act as well? Why, why is that so? Yes, I mean, we have a number of the population. This thing starts from the home. It starts from how we are actually profiled and how the narrative is created around who a black child is. And so I, I'm, I'm hoping that as we continue this series, we begin to unpick those narratives. and we begin to see how as black people, we change them and show a different narrative of our children on our, as, and ourselves. There's so much to discuss. There's so much and so scope. So the scope is so wide. And, and the, the breadth is so wide that we can begin to, to unpick those nuances of how they represent us in the community. We are not the worst. We, we are not the worst in, in terms of people, but yet the presentation they have of us seems to be the worst. So we need to begin to unpick those narratives and begin to, to change them. And that's what this course should offer us at the end of the day. I hope I'll be able to join us at some other time. Thank you so much. And please, everyone, try and complete the entire course. If it is four sessions, let us complete the four sessions because 
when we put up these courses, there's a reason why it is in sessions. So what you're learning in the first session, you build up in the next one, you build up in the third one, you build up in the fourth one. So please, let's try and complete all the sessions. Thank you very well. <laughs> that was brilliant, ma'am. Great respect. Thank you so much for your goodwill message, for your heartfelt appreciation for Auntie Nana, for the work we're doing, and for just helping people to know that you're a proof of the fact that once we refuse to minimize our contributions, like Auntie Nana taught me, do not minimize your contribution. Once you refuse that, we can actually stand up, be seen, you know, have a voice, use our voice and make a change. Okay, my hearing. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm so grateful to have you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, without further ado, we also have another highly esteemed guest. She's here to offer her goodwill messages. She's Madam Mary Antoinette Okemwa, also called Stella. So, Madam, over to you once you're ready. Thank you. I'm still looking for her if she's on at the moment. So, Madam Stella from Inad, if you are on, will you please unmute yourself? Otherwise, you could go to next person. Okay. And just a little bit about Madam Stella. She represents the European network of people of African descent. And there's also in the chat, I want us to try and engage as much as possible. A lady has identified herself as a psychologist for children. And Madam Pauline, we're so happy to have you on board. Please feel free to input who you are, what you do. Let's connect. You have so much rich resources. And we, until we pull it together, we just remain you know, in isolation, which is not healthy for any, for any tribe. And um, without further ado, since we've not identified Madam uh, to be available right now, I would move on to Mama. I call every woman Mama, but her name is Nana Haja Salifu Dagarti of the Salifu Dagarti Foundation. I already seen you, Nana. So <laughs> please, if can you let us have your good little message? Thank you, Mom. Good greetings, everyone. Uh, brothers and sisters being here. I am very honored and pleased to be here to support Save the Woman. And I believe in what Save the Woman is doing is actually a great deed. We are responsible for our own community, our own children. As I can recall from my grandmother's and my father's story, Africa, the community, are the ones who bring up the children. They teach the children, they teach us our core values. But as we come, as we travel, we kind of uh, get uh, difficult to manage with what our traditions and educations that we have learned um, is. And it makes it difficult for us to know what is actually right in a sense and what is actually wrong because we need to go and adapt something that is different to what we have. But learning something new, is doesn't mean that it is wrong. It is also an, a good educational for your own, your own self-esteem. And for us, to know, for us to know that, it actually helps us to be better parents and to be better human being and to be able to actually educate our younger generation to become more, more, how will I say it, more uh, knowledgeable than we actually think that we are. So for us to be here and to see all of my brothers and sisters on here uh, supporting this and actually being happy to join this, I am very grateful and very honored because that shows that we, we actually respect and care for our own community. And we are not sitting down and waiting that somebody has to come and do it for us. Thank you. So good. So good. So good. So good. So good. Thank you so much. I love what you said and what I've taken out from, from that is that no matter if you're learning something new, it doesn't mean something is wrong. We are always growing. That's the process. Growth. Growth is the process. Instead of perfection, we must evolve. We must learn what's new so we remain relevant and we stay focused. Apologies. My, my shoes is busy. Shut the door in a second. Um, Ola, please, can you confirm if uh, Madam Stella is available? If not, I will move on to 
it was as uh, Auntie Nana comes on, then we declare the course open and we're going to school study mode. So Nana, can you confirm if you'd like me to proceed, please? No, oh, Nana, sorry. Hola. Okay. Hola, I can't hear you. Are you speaking? Oh, sorry. I almost I moved myself. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just sally through. Could you please come help us check through the 10 days if Madam Stella is on, please? Um, not got final confirmation from how she's uh, oh no, she's no, she sent me a message confirming that she was having a network problem, but she'll try and join okay. um, when she yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you for letting yeah. us know. Be let us, could you please let us know if she joins so that we could bring her on while the lecture is going on okay, um, after, the, after the break. Yeah. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. This final person who is going to actually officially open up the course is none other than our very own Auntie Nana Asante. If you were here from the beginning, you must have caught when Councillor Favor spoke. She really gave honor to whom honor is due. And she's like the mother of Africa for us all. And this is great honor, Mama, that I want to invite you, Nana Asante, Auntie Nana Asante of the iPad Coalition. iPad, if you can see from your chats, I've sent the link of the flyer. iPad simply means the International Decade for People of African Descent, UK. She is the secretary. So Mama, over to you, please. Well, thank you very, very much. I first of all want to thank you all for those very warm words. I mean, Councillor Favour is so sweet of you. Councillor Favour is the uh, quintessential African mother. Uh, she met me at the station, took me to her house. She insisted. I, and she said, no, you have, you are we Africans. You cannot come to Watford and not come home. And it is that kind of um, African, essential Africanness that we need to keep as we live in the UK and elsewhere. Even though we are far from home, we keep our roots. Uh, for those of you who don't know, today is Nelson Mandela Day. So I will start with a quote from Nelson Mandela. And he said something quite interesting, which is relevant for us today. He said, education is the most powerful weapon that can be used to change the world. And today we are trying to educate ourselves. I mean, uh, my old man who died uh, two years ago, one of the things he always told us that the last lesson you learn in life is death. So until you die, you're forever learning. So all of us are looking really forward to Pastor Shika, who's going to give us an insight into what we need to know. And even if we are no longer parents or we are now grandparents, we still need to learn these things so that we can support other members of our community. As we always say, it takes a village to raise a child. But I need also not tell you that we need to change things because there's a lot wrong in our community. And it's not because our community is inherently uh, dysfunctional or anything, but it's because we live in a hostile environment. And therefore we owe it to ourselves to prepare ourselves to defend our children, our brothers and sisters from the onslaught that we get from a hostile environment. And there's another woman that I need you to know about. Her name is Sherry Chisel. And I know of her because, first of all, I learned of her in this book, African Voices. And there's a quote from her which is relevant to all of us. If you're facing problems, you need to take um, heed from what she said. She said, you don't make progress by standing on the sidelines, whimpering and complaining. You make progress by implementing ideas. We face systemic, structural and institutional racism. We have a problem with parenting skills that fit into this new community. We have a problem in that our, or a challenge I should say, that our community does not always support local activism. They only come for help when they are in trouble. Local organizations need your support, even when you have no problems at all, because the stronger we, the local organizations we have, the more representatives we'll get into councils and parliament, the more, you know, the more we'll have recognition for our community. So we need all of you to be involved in politics. I mean, Councillor Shika was once on the council in Harrow. 
Councillor Favour is still flying the flag for us. And congratulations to her for being deputy group leader. It is the only way to make them take account of our communities. Uh, Dame Jocelyn Barrow, she was another strong woman who unfortunately has passed on, but she left us a legacy. She said, it is our responsibility to educate our children, to learn about who they are, and give them a sense of identity. And it's on that that I'll, I'll tell you all that we are in the UN International Decade for people of African descent. The pillars of the decade are recognition, justice, and development. We need to know who we are. For a lot of people of African heritage who want to call themselves people of color, all sorts of names, except African, we've got an identity problem. I mean, I would say, look at this. I've talked about, uh, first of all, we are in an organization. We're being hosted by an organization started by Nigeria. And I say Nigeria in the house because it is a powerful nation. Have you noticed we've got Pastor Shika, Nigeria, Councillor Favor, Nigeria. You know, it's, it's, you, you have to give credit where credit is due. So if our brothers and sisters from the most populous nation in Africa come forward and do things, they will take the rest of us with them. But we need to recognize we are African. First and foremost, we're African. These other titles, Black Bame and all that, they are all unhelpful. We are African people and we need to get comfortable with our African self. And for the people from the Caribbean, you are African as well. We claim you, you are our brothers and sisters. You were taken away from our continent and some of you have gotten lost in the process, but you are African. That's who you are. You are our people. So another thing is, as we recognize we're in the decade, as we move together to try and make progress, one of the most important things is that as our community is under attack, Councillor Fever explained to us, uh, Councillor Shika is coming to do this course to give us the skills which we need to navigate this funny country. And I say funny because it's a country where there is, the French will say sous-entendu. There are things that are not spoken, but are expected. There are all sorts of things. The law says one thing, people are interpreting it another way. So we owe it to ourselves to be not only knowledgeable, but be prepared to navigate the system. If you're in trouble, you can always call on counselor Favor. She has the knowledge both as, uh, as a social worker, but also as a woman who keeps learning, she's got a master's, and a woman who cares about the community. Pastor Shika, she can look after you, your spiritual needs, and she will stand for you in, when you are in, in uh, problems. As Ola, my son, will tell you, Pastor Shika came and came and supported the community in Middlesbrough, and they've won some significant victories. That is how we, we support each other. I am pleased that one has told us that we look in the chat and there are links there. People are telling us about their skills, but these are, these are networks that we need to maintain so that none of us stand alone. We do not walk alone. We are part of a powerful community, but we need to first of all recognize who we are. We need to admire each other when we achieve. We need to clap for each other. And we need to say, uh, as I'll say in, in Ga, my language, we'll say to uh, our son, Olaleko, Aiko, you've done well to get this organization here. You are flying the flag for us in the north on Teesside. It's not easy, but nothing good has ever been easy. And together we can achieve great things. So I thank you, Pastor Shika. It's over to you. Please take us through these Afrocentric parenting skills. And we are quite clear. The reason we're saying Afrocentric, we have our values. Our values are important, but we have to, in a sense, um, embrace our values, but deal with the system and not allow anybody to make our children, um, how would you say, in my language, we'll say yakakbeme, that you allow them to be messed up so that they do not know who they are. So we need to also remember that it is what we do that changes things. And by working together as we are doing now, we are going to actually move mountains. So thank you everybody from being there because each and every one of you here is so important. Without you, 
we cannot make progress. So together we'll move and we'll, we'll ask counselor, um, I'm calling her counselor, she used to be a counselor, Pastor Chika, to please take us through the module and then help us to get the knowledge we need to help each other and to help the community. Thank you very much. Wow. Yeah, Brother Allah, you want to say something? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, don't come up, uh, any hand put up things. Madam Grace, is there anything you want to say? There's no one, Madam Grace. Or it's just by mistake. Madam Grace, do you want to unmute yourself? Is there any no. comments? No, nothing yet. Nothing. Okay. Okay. Thank you then. Okay. I will hand over back to the coordinator of direct marketing. Uh OED one. Are you on there? Oh yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm using my um please could you please write to be active? Hello and welcome again. Thank you so much. Auntie Nana, your contributions will last forever. Thank you also for honoring that today is Nelson Mandela Day. Today is the 18th, and we're making history again. Um, without further ado, Auntie Nana has already declared the course open. So I'm going to hand over to our very own counselor, former counselor, Pastor Mrs. Chika Amadi. They say she needs no introduction, but the truth is that as we are enjoying this course, we are going to enjoy even more. So I will just keep my mouth mm, and let us open our hearts, get your pens, your notepads, writing materials, your iPad, whatever you need, and let us dig in. Thank you so much, everyone. Welcome. Wow, oh, hello, everyone. So glad to be here. And, um, uh, I want to say a big, 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 massive thank you to Brother Ola and your team, uh, including Esther. You people are pulling strings in Middlesbrough. We are changing narratives and um, we are so proud of you. Thank you for putting this together. I am proud and I'm so glad to be part of it. And um, yeah, so today we are going to be talking on so many issues. Um, um, but before we get in there, I want to appreciate, uh, I, I find it hard not to use the word uh, mayor <laughs> to address, uh, <laughs> to address, uh, uh, I, I, can, I, find it hard, I find it hard to call her by her first name. Um, and for me, a mayor is always a mayor. Uh, you, as I said the other time, you're a great inspiration. And uh, I, I believe one day we'll gather together to honor you. Just a day for you. Yes, you have inspired so many of us, and uh, you're a forerunner that inspired us into politics, and we cannot forget. And not only that, you're into so many things, especially the Afrophobia. Uh, or, or it's something I'm still studying. It's something that we're going to make use of in the nearest future. And I want to thank God for my own very sister, Sister Favor, Counselor of Favor. <laughs> um, um, She's my sister, she is my sister, and I'm so glad to know you and to work with you. Thank you for, you have already worked at the ground in Middlesbrough. We are just uh, working on what you started. And I want to thank God for each and every one. Um, I want everybody to at least mention their names. I know the names are here, but before we do that, can I welcome one of our directors, directors of Family Mediation Center, who is our operational manager as well, who is here today, Pastor Uche Obefe, uh, just to say a word. Thank you so much, everyone. It's very nice being a miss today. Um, it's just something about Family Mediation Center. Um, we are a nonprofit organization. We work with authorities and relevant bodies to support vulnerable families that have identified some needs. Um, for example, if people are separated from the children, children have protection matters as domestic violence, mental health issues. We come in, we help, we provide programs to help young people regain their confidence. We also support parents and we also offer a customized adapted parental training course, which um, Pastor Chika will be running through today on course 101. So that's some of the things that we do in Family Mediation Center. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you. So, um, I think um, it's very important uh, for for each and every one of us to make because some people that we are we are not seeing their names. It says like Galaxy iPad. So I want everybody to mention their names, and I'll start with myself, Chika Amade. Uh, to yourself and, uh, oh, I would suggest uh, there's a if you click on the dot dot, we are up uh, on the right side where you have mute. You will see where it says change name. Try and put your name there so that we don't call you uh, iPad or something. Or Galaxy. Oh, okay. so we, we know that it is you. Okay. Yeah, a lot of us has, um, have already here. Yeah, that's really awesome. So, as I said, I, I wouldn't want it to be only few of us introducing ourselves. Uh, it's blessing. Uh, blessing, please, can you introduce yourself? Blessing, Osiebo. Osiebo. You can unmute uh, yourself, blessing. Yes. Hello. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I didn't know that. What do you want me to do? Now just introduce yourself. How many kids do you have? Okay. My name is um, Ogene Oro. Okay. Um, I have two kids. Okay. Thank you. Nandi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hiya. Yeah, my name is Namde Ibo Anugo uh, from Nigeria. I have four kids, all for taking one return already. A pleasure to meet you. Thank you for coming you. up. Yeah, uh, Sister Nike. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Nikki. I live in Middlesbrough. I've got three children, and I'm interested yeah. so much in this program. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Nika. Hello, Nika. Are you there? OK. We'll move forward. Uh, can we have an alliance, Sister Alliance? Hello, everyone. I'm Alliance from Dia Congo. I have three children, 16, 15, and 11. Fantastic. Um, OK. Uh, Sister Esther, we already know you. <laughs> yeah, but you can still say something. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Osakwe Noyolum Esther. From Anambra states in Nigeria, Ikenga Ogidi specifically from the royal family. Anyways, <laughs> I got three girls, three girls, ten wow. and then two four-year-olds will be five next month. Pleasure. Awesome. Yes, pleasure. Amen. Uh, Sister Priska. Hello, I'm Priska I have a four children, like my husband has said. And they're from Nigeria, and I want to learn more on this parents' focus. Fantastic. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you, Max. Hello, everyone. I'm Sister Max. I'm from Nigeria. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're here. My name is Sekinox. I live in Atlepo. I'm from Nigeria. I have four children, 19, 16, 8, and 4. So I'm very interested in this parenting course. Thank okay, you. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, is that Grace? Okay, no, you have. You have. Uh, Counselor, oh wow, Sister. Counselor Kalu, uh, Caroline, please introduce yourself uh, to us. Hello everyone. My name is Kasula Kurt Blancalo from Nigeria, Abia State, and I'm a counselor in Lowisham. I have four children. My daughter is 30, 
followed by Anthony, uh, who is also 29, followed by Michael, the, the youngest is four. I got three graduates, the youngest is under graduates. Thank you. Wow, you're welcome, welcome. Yes. And Mariam, please, Mariam. Unmute yourself. Hello. Hiya. Uh, my name is Miriam. I have three kids, eight, 11, and 18. Fantastic. You're welcome. Um, yeah, Chica. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, my name is Chica. I'm from Nigeria. I have four kids, 11, 10, 8, and 3. Wow. I'm living in Leeds. Oh, Leeds? Yeah. Okay, good to have you. Thank uh, you. Yeah, Tolu, please unmute yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Tolu Pena Desoya. I'm from Tonabe. I have only one kid, three years old. Okay, okay, good to meet you. Uh, Nikki. Yes, ma'am. Hello, everyone. My name is Nikki Taylor. Um, I'm actually representing Tama Family Support Unit here in UK. Um, we, are, we work with domestic abuse children and adults as well, both men and women. And I also have four kids, 126, 120, 1... 11 and the last one is eight. Wow, you're welcome. Thank uh, you. Uh, Shala, oh, have we met Shala? Okay, can we go to Toy, please? Hello, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm a pastor in Medusra. I pastor with a Mountain of Fire Miracles Ministries here in Medusra. Okay, okay. a pleasure to yeah. meet you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Shala, please. Oh, hello. Um, my name is Shala Okunro. I actually live in Luton. I've got two children. Um, one is 26 and one is 20, about to turn 25, I say. She always wow. tells me, mommy, I'm not 25 till that day exactly, but to me, she's 25. Anyway, I am a children's physiotherapist. I work with a, a lot of my caseload uh, vulnerable children, um, a lot of safeguarding, a lot of children in need. Um, I'm really very passionate about this. And like the, one of the speakers uh, who spoke earlier said, um, how we, we we need to change to change the story we need to change people's perce um, perception so yes i'm i'm really very interested in this topic so thanks for having me on it thank you yeah, welcome, Shola. Uh, uh, Larry. yeah my name is uh, i live in hartlepool i've got two children Two girls, one is nine and one is seven. Okay, I'm, no, glad, to be, I'm glad to be part of this because you know me very well, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure I'm you. Still, I'm 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 still, i am um, can we know you, please? Hello, Galaxy 8, not 8. Hello? Okay. Okay, let's see who else. Uh, Patsy Kumin. Patsy Kumin, sorry. Hello. Hello. Nice to be here. I'm a counsellor in Croydon. Wow. Um, hello, counsellor Caroline, my darling. <laughs> wow. You are so much blessed to have so much uh, people in authority with us today. Uh -huh. Thank you so Thank very you. much for coming. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. Uh, can we meet Peter? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
نیست Hello, peace. Okay. Let's go on to Ogidigo. Ogidigo. Ogidigo? Sorry. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah, that's my initial name, Ogidigo. Okay. So we are, we are glad to have you. You are having a walk, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having a walk. Well, I'm happy to join you. I'm happy to join the. Yeah, Thank yeah. you so very much. Um, yeah. uh, uh, let's hear, I know you read about you, uh, Pauline Riley Hunt. I just started. Uh, okay. Yeah. But just introduce yourself with your husband briefly. Hi, hello, hi. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. We're the parents of five children. Wow. Well, five, five young people, actually. Yeah. I'm so Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. People ready to pay money. Um, I don't know if there's somebody else, but I, I always feel um um better when I know people, I you know it kind of uh, removes all the kind of funny about it. So having done that, I'm sure I missed somebody. If I missed you, please somebody is ready to hand. Yes, you need yeah. me. Okay, Neka, please, sorry. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Hello? Yeah. I'm Mecca, if I need um, a I'm a mother of uh, four children with two with additional needs. So I'm very, very interested. This course is very interesting. So I hope I will learn a lot of things that will enable me to continue coping with my children that have some learning difficulties. Okay. So I'm glad uh, sure. to be here. It's our pleasure to have you. Um, yeah, having done that, uh, hopefully we have done. Uh, we have met everybody. Pastor okay. Shika. Pastor Shika. Yeah. Okay. Can we all please um, mute ourselves? So I'm going to mute everybody now. So if anybody is going to speak, don't forget to mute yourself. So Pastor Shika, you can now. Unmute yourself, please. Yeah, Chido, I think you were saying something, Chido. Hello. Yeah, hello, Chido. Can we meet you? Yes, please. Okay, who are you? <laughs> Greetings from Zimbabwe. My name is Chido. I'm an aunt uh, of uh, six. 10 year old, a 12 year old, a 10 year old, and an 8 year old. Thank Fantastic. you. You're welcome. A pleasure to meet you. So we'll go uh, Shido, for everyone of us, Shido is one of the management for Save the Woman. Okay. She's the head of and the funding for Save the Woman. Oh, thank you so very much for great work you're doing. Okay. So having done that, we are going to go into uh, the customized parental classes for uh, um, uh, African Caribbean people. And I must uh, give this disclaimer that this course we are doing is purely social and cultural. We are not doing the legal aspect of uh, uh, child protection and all that. And uh, we are, so we are looking at it from the social and from the cultural uh, perspective of family life, um, relationship between parents and their children. So I once more say thank you so much, Brother Leko, for putting this together. So um, as we must have known, we do this uh, program normally uh, on four sessions, four different models, four sessions. So once in a while, we bring somebody at S to give us another perspective. But we'll see how that goes. So why is this necessary? I'm sure that a lot of you were here when we had the last meeting, when we discussed issue of necessity. And a lot of us have summarized it. Uh, uh, Nana summarized it, uh, Leko summarized it, uh, Councillor Favor, and everybody that has spoke summarized why we are here because of the worrisome issue going on. Um, because it hurts me personally when families have issues 
uh, that has to do with uh, safeguarding uh, whatever it is with the local authority. I don't find it funny. I, it, it gets to my really inside of me and it turns me, my head. So I, have, I began to study as okay, uh, being a counselor where we have some trainings as well, I had to go extra mile to look into this area. So um, if you were not here uh, when we had the first meeting, uh, you must have seen our the um, a flyer we made. It contains everything there as a summary of why we need this. So I'm not going to go through that anymore. I'm not going to go through that. Please, at any point, if you have any questions, please uh, do let us know. Now we want to help us as a people, as African people, um, uh, to explore and understand the issues uh, of improving emotional connection that we have with children that uh, we are entrusted with. And we must know, uh, part, like in, uh, in Africa, yes, we said a community trains a child. But when we come here, a lot of people, we are disconnected from the community because we think we can do it by ourselves. You know, so, and then um, also we discover that when we come in here, uh, we have a different background. The way things we have done, like minor issue of, uh, I remember when my children were small, at the time they couldn't connect why I couldn't hug them and kiss them when I dropped them in school and all that. So I had to take time. Those are little things, but it means a lot for our children. So we are coming from a different background and now in a different setting, it's very important. Government is talking about integration. So integration is not just uh, to integrate us uh, to do with the society, but the way we do things generally, especially with our children, how we run our families, how we lead our children. It's very, very, very important. And a lot of you are doing great work already. A lot of you are doing amazing work as parents. And just as we said, the system does not understand us. I have failed to understand what we are doing or understand who we are. We are expected to just drop who we are. I'm an Igbo woman. So now this society does not even think of Igbo. They want me to be pure English person. I can't be English. I, am, I can be British, but I'm Igbo woman. So there are things we do certain ways. It's like, uh, let me give you an example, Yoruba, uh, Yoruba family. Yoruba people, they do what they call dobale. When you see an adult, you prostrate or something. You know, so this is how we grew up. This is how we, we came in here. So some of them are misunderstood. Some of them are misinterpreted. It is we, we black people, we are the ones that will change the narrative. We Africans, we are the ones to change. But when they, when they see how we do things, because at times what we do, certain things we do are very wrong, both from the spiritual angle and otherwise, the way we, um, we relate to our children. Some of them are so, are so horrible. Uh, so we want to look at it in the rounds. And I want to assure you, you are not doing this course because you're a bad parent. That's not why, why this was put together. We, you are not, none of you, uh, none of us is a bad parent. It's just that we want to make sure we are doing whatever we can to ensure we fit into the society. So we also want to raise greater awareness of expectations uh, of our newfound home. There are great expectations. You know, um, um, Councillor Nana or Mayor Nana said before, uh, we are saying black lives matter. I don't just believe in carrying the, uh, the uh, banners and the flyers and going everywhere. I say my life matter. There are things we do that we don't need anybody to know that we matter. When we do things and they know that we know what we are doing, they will respect us. So these are the reasons why we are here. So my, my main issue I want to raise here is what we are doing is raise yourself before you raise your children. Raise yourself before you raise your children. We are talking about raise yourself, not that you don't know it, but in the, in the culture we met, in the tradition we met, we must uh, intentionally raise ourselves 
like what we are doing today. Not say I know it all. I know some parents, when you talk to them, I have had men and women, when you say, okay, you need to learn that. They say, no, nobody can teach me how to train my children. Then you are making some mistakes. So most of us fail to connect with our children as well. And so you discover that time children are looking for whom to talk to. So when they go to school, they start saying things. Uh, at time the children, we are not connected with them and they want to be connected outside. I know a child who um, disappeared from the house for three days and the mother couldn't understand it. When he finally got back home, he was asked, why did you disappear? A teenager, a young teenager, young adult. So, well, I think they love me. Those people that called me, they love me more than you because he chats with them, he connects with them, he relates with them, but back home, there's no relationship. It's just that normal, this is your mom, this is your dad, and this is a child. Have you eaten your food? Have you done your homework? <laughs> That's how we sound. That's how we sound in the ears of the children. Have you done your homework? Have you swept your room? Have you done this? You know, so that's missing. There's a missing jigsaw, a missing link. Even when they want to tell us something important, the way we respond at times pushes uh, uh, pushes them away. So, so that is why we are here today. So, but I would say, the starting point is for you to connect with your children emotionally and mentally in this era we must understand the issue of mental health. Mental health goes into the, for me it's overarching, it's an overarching uh, issue surrounding uh, emotional connection with our children. Mental health. And uh, I was speaking to, I was speaking to somebody the other time about uh, mental health. Some of us have, uh, we have this, um, uh, what is it called? We, we look at it as, as a, we have a stigma attached to mental health. So instead of us to study, how, to understand what mental health is, how does it affect my children? How does it affect my relationship with my, my children and my family my, and the other people? We just look at it as, oh, that person has mental health problems. Because where we are coming from, we know that everything that has to do with mental issues, psychological issue, uh, psychiatric issue, we, we take them as being insane. But do we know that our children at times have mental issues, mental health issues? And I want, to, I want us to look at, having said that, I want us to look at it. These mental health issues, because if you understand the, uh, the impact of mental health issues on your children, you will understand where they reason. You will understand when there is change in their mood. You will understand when there's change in even what they know. It will help you to connect with them. There was um, one time we had uh, a workshop like this and all we dealt with it was the language our teenagers are using that most of us don't even know. There are languages they use there are languages children use that we parents do not connect with. So having said that, this mental health issue is not just for you to understand your children. It is also for you to understand yourself, to help you, to better equip us. So that's why today we are going to be looking at mental health issue and the family. Mental health and the family. Because I love bringing this issue uh, first in the programs because it serves as the foundation. Now, can I ask you, maybe anybody that is ready, please do answer. What do you understand by mental health? I like to say that mental health is just like you have physical health. Generally, how is your body feeling? Are you asthmatic? Can you run without after just two minutes of running? So mental health is how is your mind? Is it sound? Is it balanced? Are you stressed? Are you afraid? Are you anxious? Are you paranoid? So mental health is just general well-being or general health like of your mind. Okay, thank you. That's you summarized it very well. Now, who else will tell us about uh, psychiatric? When someone has psychiatric problem, yeah, 
if you want us, if you want to answer, please raise your hand. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Okay. Pasuch, I thought you were saying something. Oh, okay, sorry. Yes. Okay, yeah. Nike. So my own understanding, um, I want to say um when someone has um psychiatric problem, it means that the person is displaying symptoms of psychosis. Okay. You know, like psychotic um symptoms. Okay. Yeah, you they are not in the right state of mind. Okay. And so what's the difference between when somebody has psychiatric issues and mental health issues? Um, psychiatric means um, it's a mental disorder. So that's going negative. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. You're correct. Well, the all of them are all mental health issues, psychiatric and mental health. But the there's a difference. A uh, psychiatric issue is a, a higher level of mental health, at which must be diagnosed by the doctor and treated by the doctor. But mental health issues have different levels. Some of them are very mild, and some of them are a bit um, not very mild. And uh, most of them don't last. Mental health issues at times don't last for a long time. Some of them, if detected early and uh, paid attention to, and uh, if um, if uh, um, uh, medical professionals are involved, they can recover. Somebody can recover quickly. And who we agree with me that as parents, that once in a while we go through mental health issues. Is there anybody who can testify to that? Say yes, yes, please. Yeah. Oh, I just specify, yes, I agree. Yeah, okay. Any other person wants to say? I agree, I just agree, yeah. Yeah, okay. Anybody else? Yeah? Nike? Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I believe that um, a normal human being sometimes may have you know like a um, mental health and um, like maybe just for five minutes to to have that kind of uh, mental health and um, this uh, like issue also uh, what i mean is probably the person is going through stress and the way we be we relate with people around us at that time is going to be very different from how we relate with them when we are not having any when we're not being stressed when we're not being stressed so the way we will relate when we are stressed is going to be different from where we are not stressed. And some people can become, some people may be depressed and that way it's from the way they react to situations. So at that time, when they are reacting in a very uh, negative way, as opposed to when, um, as opposed to when they react positively to situations. So at that time to me, I believe they are going through mental health. Um, situation, but they they're just temporary. Good. Okay. Okay. Having said that, that we agree, we, all of us agree that at some point, it could be money issues when we are trying to budget on low income, and we are we are distressed. At times, it could be uh, when there is a conflict between couples. There are so many things, and you discover that we are not our normal selves. So. Um, Blessing, do you want to say something? You're raising your hand. Okay. And who knows or who will agree with me that whenever there is any mental health issue in a parent that children are affected? We agree. Yes. Whenever there is a mental health issue, no matter how minor it is, children pick it up. But where we are coming from, we don't look at children's faces. We don't look at their faces, we don't understand. We think, okay, it doesn't concern them. Even when some of them ask questions, we don't answer. We don't explain and carry them along. 
And so when, when such happens, uh, there's a disconnect at that point between that parent and the child. And why we are saying, talking about this mental health issue is to keep us to be aware that these things happen. These things happen. You could go to work and it was so massive, the job was so massive or somebody upset you. And when you come in, do you realize that at times your, 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 your uh, discussion is different? or your relationship with your children is impacted. At times you say, okay, leave me, leave me, don't know what I have been to just, can you go away, go away, go away. Those things uh, affect our relationship with our children because they feel, okay, is she blaming me for whatever that has happened? So now, having said that, who do you think generally in a family that mental health issues affect, apart from parents? We agree that children can be affected by mental health issues. Yes. Do, do we agree? Yes. Okay. Do you have any example without mentioning particular case? Sample of uh, where you have uh, where you noticed a mental health issue in a child or emotional disturbance? Just minor one and, and the brief one. Yeah, uh, Olori. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, in a situation whereby the family is not really going on well, and a lot of things have been happening between both parents, it really tells on the children. You know, it's got a trauma for the children, which really affect them in their studies, even their social life, and all that. Because I realized something in this country, like even a child of six years old, know if something's happened to the mom, you know, if mom is not okay, and that affects the children. That is so true. You see, so that is one of the issues where we where we are coming from. In Africa, adults don't tell children, we say that this is too much for the child. We don't carry them along. So children also have at times go through those traumas. Uh, does any other person have any example again of how you can? Yeah, yeah, twenty. Yeah, twenty. I've seen a, a situation that the parents were undergoing divorce, and it becomes so tense on the family mm. that uh, the first daughter became so depressed. She was just going about crying everywhere she went to. Oh. And uh, the parents were not even aware. She yeah. needed she needed to consult her GP to tell the, because both of them happened to be in June. I have to tell the, the GP that she was depressed and the parents were not aware that she has seen the GP for that uh, situation. Wow. Now they are battling with the younger one who had about five days before um, he gained admission into the uni. But now the uni is saying that he's not doing well. Hmm. So, wow. and it's the, it's the parents, what the parents were going through. It went so bad, you know, and you know, when such things happen, the children will take side of the parents. Hmm. Sometimes one will, will take side of the father. Sometimes both of them will take side of, but in this case, both of them took side of their mother. Oh. To the extent that even their, um, the money they give them in the university for study, they have to be giving it to the mother to, you know, to spend on the court's matter. So, uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a true story that I'm saying now, because as a pastor, you know, we see a lot of things. Okay, um, I think another person, Nikki, raised her hand. Nikki? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I just want to give you an example. This one is um, very close to me. The mother and father separated. They have separated for up to six years, and this their first child uh, went to uni. She was, she was not coping. She never coped. She withdrew herself. She did not tell her mom, uh, but she knew her mom was not happy. Oh. Her mom was always angry every time 
So when she went to uni, she could not cope. She wanted to commit suicide. Oh. And um, she now decided to write her mom a long story from when the dad left and um, what happened, why she has not been herself. That she was actually blaming her mom. That it was her mom that made the dad leave the house and never came back. Or she never told her mom what well, you know then. But when she, she just realized that life is not worth living, this is happening to my mom and dad. And I know my mom is not happy. She has never been happy since then. You know, she wrote all the story to her mom. Her mom quickly ran to her uni, you know, just to she could not, she has not even gone back to uni. She has not been able to put pieces back together again. Wow. Wow. So this is something, as I said. Uh, when divorce is going on, everything we we our culture we have the tendency to hush it. We Cash hush it. Don't Caroline. Want to... Yeah, Caroline. Cash. Caroline. Yeah. Do you want me to say something? Yeah, I think you raise your hand. Yeah, I did. I did. Please, yeah, you are talking. Okay. Yeah, just relating what um everybody is saying. Um. Like uh, Nikki mentioned about a uh, problem with the school. For example, in my borough, we got the highest exclusion. I think it's more than the whole nation, I'm telling you now. Oh. And all this is caused by uh, domestic abuse. We got, it's got even high. Now we have lockdown. Oh. So I'm um, one of the CYP vice chair for CYP in my borough. And when I visit school, the head teacher, I have to communicate with them to know what is happening. And they are telling me they have the highest domestic abuse and it's affecting the kids in the school. They are not concentrating when the teacher is teaching and they are not coming to school early. And even going back home, there's nobody at home to receive the children. So their homework is not being done. So because their homework are not being done, they are not being able to cope with, with the other homework they're getting every week. So it becomes a stress. So some of them, instead of going home, they end up in streets. And who is picking them up? The gangs are picking them up. The drug dealers are picking them up. And when you hear about the knife crime, all this knife crime is all about this mental health and also domestic abuse happening, domestic violence. So we need to start communicating with our fellow parents. There is a lot of lack of communication because our parents are now working three jobs in one day. So if there is a way we can also ask the council, they need to start giving our them people job. It's not just cleaning. We are not only there to work in the supermarket. It's not enough. So all these are becoming a lot of problems for our families. Oh. They are not earning a lot. So we have a lot to work with. Yes, so this thank is you, Councillor. Why it is anyway. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor um, Caroline. That's so true. So the bottom line is that everything we adults do, we must give our children consideration, carry them along. So apart from domestic violence and other, there are other issues that cause mental health and emotional problems for our children. Um, maybe you have something else other than what she had, they, these two have mentioned, like moving house. Yes. Most parents, do we know that when we move house, that the children, children. Yeah. affects the children? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Yes. And we yeah. Changing up the environment, yes. Yes. So how many of us sit down to explain to our children before we embark in on this? Now that's the issue, where we are coming from, there this is adult talk, and children are not carried along, and they are worried, they are not understanding what you are doing. What is the next step now? Who knows where I'm going to meet now? Who knows the type of school that I'm going to? Nobody is explaining to them. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Sorry, my name is... Can I say something? Yes, please, Val. Yes, hi, thank you. I'm glad that you're having this discussion because I do think that, um, you know, we've moved from the old school way of 
treating children. It's not about children being seen and not heard anymore. Um, it's about children being part of um, what we're doing. And we speak to our children and um, show them that information because, you know, one of the things that we know is that when children move to a different area from the age of 10 years, from the age of 10 years and above, they are less likely to settle down. And it's so important that we um, recognize and explain to them um, the importance and just really talk to our children more. There are lots of parents as well, though, in our Black community who are doing well and talking to our children and sharing with them what's going on. But there are some as well. Um, as we know, our children are more likely to be taken away into care. And, um, you know, you know, I just came off another Zoom where we spoke about um, Black and ethnic minority women are having the most domestic violence and the most anxiety during this COVID. You know, we face a lot of things us as Black women. Yes. And it's so important that we can talk to each other and we can support each other and make sure our children are part of this um, talking. And it's so important that um, our mental, um, we keep sane. We, we look after our mental wellness because we don't live in an easy society. We know because of discrimination and racism, we know that every day we may go to work or wherever that we, whatever we do, we face that. So we must see our home as a sanctuary, a sanctuary where we come together and, you know, um, regroup and speak wellness to our children. Um, and I'm glad that you're having this and um, because another thing as well is not enough parents go to the schools to meet the teachers and we have to go there and let the teachers know that it's a partnership between home and school. They, you know, too many children are underachieving. Surely the parents should know where their children are. are how good they're doing. And then if, that, if something's not going well, we must hold the school accountable, as well as we must also input things in the home as well. So it's really important that we, because too many of our children are being excluded. Yes, oh, sorry. Sorry for that. Okay, sorry, it's, uh, I mistakenly mute you. Okay, did you, um, Chica, did you want me to shut up? Is that why you did that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wanted to wrap it up, not shut I up. I know, okay. I just wanted to, I, this is such a big thing for me. Parents and children, we've got to stop the, on the, the children, um, our future, our, our future is our children, so we must put goodness into them. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, that's really well delivered there. Thank you. You know, I prefer, I don't want to just be talking to everybody. I want to hear from us because that's how we connect more. Uh, yeah, Uche, Pastor Uche, you have something to say? Unmute yourself. So thank you. So I think another area that has affected children is during this pandemic, a lot of children at home. So and they're on their devices, maybe sometimes from morning to evenings. Their parents may be working and maybe they're snapping at them and then they're bombarded with the news of COVID. And some children are not going out to the park or going outside. So they've been at home for three months and not really exposed to going outside. You know, parents are very cautious about taking them to the shops. And so it's affecting some of the children. They feel a bit stressed. Sometimes when they're on their devices, a lot you can even see the stream, you know, um, because they are not interacting with their friends. And so I think that if we, you know, by learning what you have to teach us, Matt, and also if we can take the children out sometimes, it can help to reduce um, that stress. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. Because one of the things I said here, we are looking at what are the um, risk, risk factors. These are the risk factors we are looking at. We have looked at um, 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 uh, pandemic, we have looked at um, uh, domestic violence, money matters. There are other issues. Like one of them, again, is 
uh, when a when a parent, let's say a single parent, is getting married to somebody new or bringing a boyfriend home, that can trigger uh, emotional and mental health issue in children. But how many of us take that into consideration? We ha we already go far. Okay, Olori, you want to say something on that? Yeah. Olori, you want to say something on that? Yeah. Um, yes, that alone affects children as well because seeing a stepdad or a stepmom mm -hmm. really affect the children as well because um, the children were like causing them like what's going on. This is not the same person I used to know affecting them mentally. Yes, because um, I do work as a support worker and I've seen a situation whereby. Um, a lady was raped by a stepdad. Do you know that's that's traumatic for that for her to be in that situation? You know. Yeah. So it's it's really hard there. Yeah. Yeah. So what what we have why we brought that is that it is a risk factor that most of us must think about whenever we are uh, entering into new relationships. Have the children at the back of your mind. You should have the discussion with them before you start bringing somebody home or you start talking to them because these things affect them when they go to school. Because in school, as uh, we have our counselor uh, favor here, we discover that in schools now there are social workers that are stationary there and they pick these cues up. So it's very important that as a parent, you pick up the cues when your child is is uh, is not her very self or himself when the child is disturbed you should be the first to pick it up but the problem we have as a um, counselor caroline said is we are working three hours so we don't even know or we ha or we know that okay the breakfast is there that one is there that one is there i will see you later and you know we run off so it's something we must look at when there is a change when there is a change in circumstance of any form life events and experiences also affect children at times we lose uncles life events and uh, experiences like a uh, uh, pastor mentioned um, COVID. some of them may hear that somebody died our english person will sit their children down and say you know that uncle this is what happened because the child is is worried the child does not understand what is going on and we just say it, we talk about it, we just move on. Maybe we are talking with one auntie and you cried in the middle of it, you, you shed some tears and the child does, is looking at you as, well, what's making my mom upset or my dad upset? And nobody explains to that child what was going on. If you don't want them to know so that it doesn't affect them, the best thing is do whatever you want to do, show your emotions somewhere else, do your weeping somewhere else, do your crying, but if you must, cry where your children will see you. It is very important you carry them along without uh, making them emotional. But you need to explain the circumstance because apart from that, yes, I have lost him, they, it can trigger them start thinking of death themselves. They'll be worried. So the person has closed their eyes, they're not going to wake up again. And you discover they have sleepless nights. And the, the, uh, sleepless nights is one of the symptoms of domestic violence, uh, of, uh, sorry, of uh, mental health in children. So the, the whole package or the whole issue about mental health, recognizing that mental health can affect our children. It may not be a, 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 a one that is so disturbing, so glaring, because there are some mental health that are biological. There are some children that have, it's biological, that we are born like that. They are very, um, oh, Okay, sorry. Shola. Uh, Shola, please, you want to say something? Shola. I'm, I'm just uh, muting myself. Um, Auntie, you are just you are just about to hit the nail um, right on top. I was just going to say that, that there are some medical reasons sometimes that is so subtle, so um, 
so difficult really for children, especially in this area of ADHD, when they are hyperactive. Um, in, in especially when, when you have a child in the class who is hyperactive, if, especially with a black child, the teacher, they just keep giving that child detention, detention, detention. With time, that child is the naughty child. That child is on the corridor. Before you know it, that child is joining gangs. And before you know it, and whereas if it was like the Caucasian, for example, they'll be very good in saying, oh, this child, he needs extra support. We have to refer this child. The parents themselves have no clue. Their child is like that. They just think this boy is so active, you know. But in school, it's the restless one. It's not settling down. They keep disrupting. The, the, the impulse, they're so impulsive. And it's all a, it's a medical reason. And those children, they will immediately do referrals and send them to the community for them to, be, to, to, to have help. Whereas the black children, they tend to be excluded. So what I would just, um, it's just an, also an area that, and by the time that child has gone too far and is already now getting referred, sometimes it's too late and then they start to medicate the child. I think it also has to do with a parent, you know, parenting really, recognizing that, look, my child is not that this child is naughty. There may just be something other going on. And if they, there's nothing wrong if they, they're in any doubt, there's nothing wrong going to the GP and saying, please, I'm just concerned with my child. He's not sleeping well, he's not relaxing, he's so active, he's, you know, he's a clever boy, but it's just impulse, the impulse, it's struggling to control the impulse. Get the GP to refer that child to the pediatrician, either in the community or in the hospital, so that they can put whatever support that child needs in place for them to go a long way. Sorry, that was what I wanted to say. Uh, no, 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 that's absolutely so true. But some of them are very subtle. Mm -hmm. I've had parents uh, who um, told me, okay, you know what, maybe you need to come and take this child and start living with this child. This child is so, so hyper, this child. And you know, you are, then parents are screaming and not even understanding them. So when you have such a situation, it is a time to really sit down and listen to that child, understand why the child is like that. And I think uh, Pauline, uh, right, yeah, you are raising your hand. Hello, hi. Hi. Um, I just like to confirm. I'm um, just listening to um to to um to Shola, yeah. and um how important what she um she said um is, especially for um the black community. Yeah. As a psychologist, especially um my area of specialism is actually children with ADHD, ASD, and the whole gamut. Yeah. And one of the things that we know is that by the time our children get to see a specialist, it's late. So we, so whereas early identification, early intervention, we know is the key. By the time our children get there, we're looking at sometimes six, seven, even later into secondary school. Hmm. One of the problems is that whenever there's anything going on, we end up with a diagnosis of emotional behavioral disorder. Hmm. It's always located in the emotion, in the behavior. There's always something wrong with the, the child from a behavioral point of view or the family. And just as Shola says, rather than them stopping and thinking, well, hang on a bit, could this be something else? Could this be a condition that is that we've missed? And so this is one of the challenges that, um, that we have. Time and time again, you will hear parents say, I knew something was, was wrong with my child when there were two when they were three. And sadly, for us, the GP services are not always our best point of call. Because if you talk to the same parents, they'll say, I went back to my parent, my, my GP, time and time again, and they wouldn't refer me. So I can't even get past first base to even get to a, a, a community That's service. Perfect. So I just wanted to just endorse what Shola says that she's, you know, she's absolutely right. And, for, and, and to thank you all and, and what you're saying as well in terms of risk factors. Yeah. These, yeah. these, these are risk factors. And can I, add, can, can I throw one more thing into the mix for us to think about? Yeah. I think given everything that we're all going through at the moment, and I say we, because as I said, I'm a parent myself. 
there's so much on the television. There's so much negativity that we've seen. I've been on other groups. I work with obviously lots of people. And I think there's, there's an exhaustion. Mm. There's a tiredness beyond anything that I've known and seen in my lifetime. And we see on the television words like unprecedented. But I'm surrounded by strong professionals who at the moment are feeling so stressed by it all. Now, what's interesting, if you listen to the conversation, a lot of us are saying things like, I can't live in this country anymore. I've had enough. I'm getting out. Now, if they were going to go, some of them with their children, you wouldn't mind. But what is, I feel, afraid is about to happen is a system that we had in the early days when my, my parents came over. Many came over, left their children behind with a view to sending for the children later. We have something that has been occurring over the last couple of years, and I fear that it's going to happen again, oh. where what is happening is we are sending our children back. So we are still separating. Somebody called Dr. Elaine Arnold wrote a brilliant book where she talked about separation and reunion. And she's been looking at that for many, many years, and this is what we're seeing. We now have what we call an intergenerational situation going on, where it's reversed, where we are sending our children back to live with our parents who have gone back to the Caribbean or to Africa to live. But we are perpetuating this separation and the anxiety that comes with every good intention of wanting a better life for our children, but we're not going as parents. Amen. We're not going with them. I'm going to leave it as that. And I raised that because my husband and I, we took our children back. My husband's from Barbados. And we took our five children in 2002 out because we wanted them to experience growing up in the Caribbean, being to growing up strong around black people, teachers, doctors, etc. And we took them and we brought them back, which is the key. If you're going to go, it's fine, but let's take our children with us. Let's try not to keep sending them away. Or this rift that is going to that is there is going to perpetuate. It's just something I wanted to throw out. I don't know if anybody else has experienced it. I understand why they're doing it. But the children, do they understand why they're being sent away? How are they feeling? Oh. They think they've done something wrong. But we yeah. mean it. We mean the best. Always as parents. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Polly. That's this. That's um, um, okay. Thank you for that. That's very incisive. Uh, yeah, it's very important. You see, what we're looking at is the. Thank you so much for all of us following on uh, YouTube. Uh, just have in house discussion now. I'm going to bring uh, Mr. Femi Abolade. Do you want to come on video and just have a quick? Contribution why we, before we continue the session. Oh yeah. I don't know. Can you can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, all our followers are on YouTube as well. Okay, thank you very much. I want to use the opportunity to thank um Mr. La and the team for the great job we are doing. I, I've been following um on YouTube before now, even though I wanted to follow on Zoom so that I can also make um, contributions. But uh, I wouldn't want to stop the flow of Pastor Chica, so I wouldn't say much now. But I won't say that I've, everything I've been said so far, um, personally, because I'm new in the country, I, I mean new because I'm still less than a year. So my, my reasoning is being enlightened and um, my the, the information level that's been shared here is, is top notch. And I want to, I want to appreciate Pastor Chica and every other person who has spoken earlier. So I would not want to break the flow, maybe as uh, in the course of the meeting, if there are other things that I want to say, we'll definitely um, give my my thoughts as, as the program goes ahead. Thank you for the honor. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you everyone for joining us on YouTube. Please follow us on our, our social media and don't forget to subscribe, press subscribe and also press that bell so that anytime we have a new video, you'll be the first to be alert. And uh, there are some comments in the chat box on YouTube. If you want to register for the course, we are starting the course soon, the, another cohort, please book, register yourself and we will get in touch with you. I've got Pastor Femi Kings, titular of Femi Kings as well. Do you want to have 
one or two minutes before we proceed again, please. Okay. Hola, well done, well done, well done. It's um, good to have this um, session going on. And um, I've also been following on YouTube and um, I'm also glad to know that people are getting enlightened and enlightened the more. I would just want to say that we should not allow systems creep into our home and snatch our children from us even when we don't know that such systems are doing that. Um, it's good when we know that there are issues from outside and we can attack it. We can take prevention to them. But in my training on parenting, I've come to know that there are a lot of systems within the house that is snatching our children from us um, and we are not conversing about it. And we are even the one giving them all the systems. So as much as we are preparing for what is coming from outside, have you been able to check what is within that is taking, that has replaced you as a father, that has replaced you as a mother, that has replaced you as an attention giver, that has replaced you as the one that your children believe and trust in. Let's watch out for that. Hola, parenting is hard work and I wish we do it well. Thank you. Thank you very Let's much. Let's enjoy Pastor Chica. Thank you very much. We continue with our session. Please don't forget to subscribe. Risk factors that trigger children, trigger emotional and mental health issues, and uh, our ability to pay attention, to detect them. Um, you know, in our houses, do you know at times our children are bullied and their stigma when we notice that they are very hyper, they are very smart. All those things can trigger further mental health issues. When a child has issues and parents are saying, I knew something is wrong with you. And the other child, they are saying that child is beautiful, that child is good. And they constantly say negative things to the children, which may be true, but constant saying it can trigger something in them and they become more rebellious. So what we say at home as well, the, the atmosphere we create, our um, award system in the house, have a very, very, very uh, uh, extensive impact on the children. I don't know if any of you understand what I'm saying. Um, when you have, like, I, I know of a family who a child had a problem, and instead of trying to understand that child, the mother is saying this child has, is, a, is a witch. And so that brings in our religious matter. Instead of listening to that child, we, we take it into religion. Uh, yeah. Uh, Esther. I just want to say that Nana Haja's hand has been up for about 10, 20 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, where is she? Where is she? Please, she should, she should, say, she should say something. I can't see her. Unmute yourself, Mama. Nana Haja. Hello, oh, okay. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just uh, basically wanted to add to it. For example, um, when I, I, I uh, concur what, um, uh, Sister Pauline said, um, basically, like, I do a reverse. I am a, a single mother with four children. Um, I've got a daughter who is 16, going to be 17. I've got twins boys who are going to be uh, 15. And I've got a younger who is going to be four, 14. And what I do with them is that I let them know that Africa is a paradise. And if, if they do not have uh, listen to core values or obey core values, they cannot take their behavior into Africa. So I use it like Africa is a paradise whereby if we go into Africa, they need to be proud to be going there. I don't use home to them as a punishment. I use it as a, as a treat, as a holiday. I don't use going to Germany or Spain or something as a holiday. I use back home as a holiday trip and as a, as a, as a bonus for them. 
I talk to my children. I've been a single parent since my younger was one. And now my younger is going to be 14 years old. And I have dealt with social services. And social services, what happened is that when my children was, my youngest was in year two, the social services came to my house telling me that my children are being feeling sad and not happy and they are crying in school. So I asked the social services to go back to the school and use the school as reference. I want the, the school to give them reference on how do I, uh, am I as a parent? Have I been uh, participating in what the children are doing in school? Have I support my children uh, into school? Do I talk to them? My children, we ask them the question and we ask the social service to ask their children and the children told the social service, that's one of my twins. And that time he was in year three. And he said to them, why are you questioning me and asking me that if my mommy is bad? My mommy is not bad. I don't know who is telling you that my mommy is bad. Somebody hit my daughter and my daughter fell down in school and she was crying. Instead of them raising that issue, they decided to say that the child is sad. So I used the school to do the reference of me being a parent and how I have supported my children coming to school. I make sure my children attend school. I make sure they do their homework. I make sure that they participate in almost every other activities that the school is asking them to do. So the school will not take that and tell me that my children are not coming to school. They are absent at school. They did so that they'll be using that against me. So I did almost everything for the children to be happy every morning going to school. Even if the children are not happy going to school. My daughter wasn't happy because she didn't have friends. The friends were bullying her and everything. But I sat down with her and I talked to her. And I told her, she, because she is a very intelligent and a very bright princess of Africa, wow. that is why maybe other people are jealous of her. So she really understood that and then she went to school and said that yes she is a princess they told her she is not a princess she said yes she is a princess from africa and that is what makes her feel proud and since then she told them that my mommy always called every single girl a princess because they are princesses and the men the boys are prince so this is what i put in my children's head i asked them what do you want to do? What do you want to become in the future? This one will say, I want to be engineer. So I call them Mr. Engineer. I call this one, oh, Mr. Doctor, oh, Mr. President. So you encourage them, you talk to them. I also sit down with them. We do a monthly meeting all the time and discuss within amongst ourselves what is wrong. We have a line, we have a core value that we don't cross. They shouldn't cross as children and I shouldn't cross as a parent. And we need to reflect on that. So there is so many things, and it is not just sometimes only the parent, it is also sometimes the influence from outside. That maybe the parent hasn't done nothing, but it's just the influence that is coming from outside, it makes it difficult for the parents to know how they should deal with their children. Yeah. To, be, to, be, uh, to be able to communicate and go in places with your children together, of being family going together, that helps the children. I am a Pan-Africanist, I am a human rights activist, and I work a lot. And sometimes when I go to this, uh, mm. this uh, uh, festivals or events, I always take my children with. I make sure they understand the history of African, the African history, the true African history. Mm. I don't make them see the Africans are poor, the Africans are dead. I make them see, how Africans have contributed to the, the, the world. For example, when my children are working, they'll tell you, yeah, it is an African man who brought the traffic light. Because I teach them those history. For okay. them to know they can be also somebody if they will be able to follow the principle and the code. Sorry. <laughs> Once I touch it, it just goes. I'm sorry. Thank you so very much. That is very important. We. 
we must uh, empower our children and let them know that we can do anything. Thank you. Now, Thank I want you. us to, I know somebody has raised their hand, but let's move quickly. I want us to discuss the signs because you mentioned something, Nana. You said that the, their children were crying in school. And that is why we are looking, what, that is part of what we are looking at, the issue of emotional. Why is it that we are not crying at home and they go to school crying? That's what we are looking at. Where we know, where we, where we can read our children's emotional well being instead of somebody else be the one to tell us. So, what are some symptoms that you see in children that you would know that they are emotionally uh, disturbed? I don't know the examples. If you have any examples, okay. thank you so very much, Nana. Once more. Okay. So, any like examples, what is it that makes children? Maybe at home you give them food, you give them whatever they need, and when they get to school, some of them are crying, they don't want to go into class, some of them start showing attitude. So these are the things we want to pick up from. We don't want them to go to school and do something that will now uh, make the teacher start suspecting that something is going on back home. So we want to nip it at the board. So I don't know if somebody, else, if somebody has something to say on that. Because a lot of children have taken what is going on at home because nobody explained to them. So when they go to school, they say something. I'll give an example. A mother fell down. Um, a mother and the father was talking. And, uh, and the, saw her, saw her, the woman fell. When she fell, the man wanted to help her out and hit her on the nose. And she started bleeding. The daughter saw what happened and nobody explained said anything dressed her up went to school the first thing she said is that my mommy uh, uh, my mommy's uh, blood is coming out of my mother my mommy's uh, nose within a few hours social workers came in so we need to understand the emotional because, um, child is a teenager, of our children so that not the school not anybody we detect it more than us. We don't want somebody else to detect our, that our children has issues. As mothers here, as fathers here, I want to ask you, what are the signs that you have ever seen or that you think you know about that shows that a child has mental issue? I know some of them come from peer pressure. Some of them come from homework. Some of them are attention seeking. Some of them are attention seeking. So, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, Esther. Yes, I want to say that from my own childhood, one thing that I'll do was withdraw. So everybody will be together and I'll just shut in. Another thing is bedwetting. My own um, kids that I've observed when they're nervous is their tummy is always aching them and they don't want to go out. They don't want to meet anyone. They're just like, so these are little signs that you can ask them like, okay, what's really going on? We need to sit down and talk and do I need to reassure you that you're going to be fine? So these are just a couple of signs, yeah. Yes. That is fine. So these children, you can't stop them from having these signs. When they are emotionally troubled, they can start um, um, uh, throwing up tantrum. But where we are talking of is to prepare us parents that when we notice these things, some of us, we begin to call the child names that the child is always weighing on the bed. And that also brings more uh, mental health challenges to the child. So we see all this. Is. So how do we, as parents, when you pick up a symptom in your child, how will you react? That is what I want us to change. I want us to think about. I want you to think about it, especially those of you that have younger children. There may be something you notice about a particular child. Maybe they're always complaining, they're always competitive and all that. How do you react? Because how you react to these things can either empower them or trigger mental health issues. I don't know if anybody has any example or want to say something on that. Because uh, the way we African parents, we react to children when they are exhibiting some mental challenges can exhibit uh, what they're going through. Yeah, uh, Esther, you want to say something? That was my little girl. But then, to be honest, I think most of the adults, we've not reacted really well. 
um, because we already have our own issues. Children, most of the time, they say happy baby, happy mama, happy baby. They feed off our own energy. Just like even right now, before we started, I was like, oh, oh, my laptop went off. My daughter, I said, quickly, quickly, help me bring my stand. She brought my stand and now my stand is broken. So maybe in my excitement, she is now like overdone the stand and it's end up broken. So I think that you're right. When you first started, you said, raise yourself before you raise your kids. Because many parents need to take a step back, take a deep breath and say, okay, am I panicking right now? Because you might not be aware, but your energy, because your thought is energy. Your thought is giving up that vibe of, oh, I'm so scared. And your kids are acting really crazy too. So I, I for me, first of all, working yourself, take a deep breath. And just like reset to your mind, like, okay, what's going on now? Am I actually acting out of fear or am I acting out of love? Am I acting out of the best interest of my family and my child? Or am I just here reacting? Because when you take a deep breath, you'll be able to see that that child is crying because he is hurt. He is scared. He's feeling. So now you now say, okay, I need to reassure that person. Or I need to give them some courage and encouragement. So I think, first of all, make sure that you are okay. But you can't be okay if you're always bothered and troubled. So, Yeah. Thank you so very much, Esther. That's so true. Um, okay, Nana Haja. Um, I will also say that, for example, first of all, we need to try and read our children. We need to try and look at them and understand them. Because, for example, with my children, I don't put them all in the same pot because I identify each of them in a different way. I have twins, so I need to kind of identify them because they are identical. So I know, I study them and I know what the other one does and the other one doesn't. So I use that, how I see them and how they react, that is what I see. One of my twins, for example, he will kind of um, just be on his own, close everything up, he doesn't, that, that moment I know that there is some, some issue. Yeah. And that time, I don't just go straight to him and ask, oh, what is the problem or what is the issue? I kind of find a different way. I say to myself, okay, today I'm going to take time off. Maybe I'm not going to stay along to maybe do certain things that I always do, but today I'm going to take maybe a few time off. Let's do a movie night. Then we do movie night. Or I look at what that child actually likes and then try and do something like that. And then when we are doing that is when I bring the conversation oh, today I was actually maybe not feeling well, or I'm maybe thinking that there's something bothering me. And this is how I get them to talk. And I get them to then say things by doing something and not just going straight, asking them what is the issue or what is going on? Why are you not talking to me? No, I try to find a way to engage with them, to let them know that this time that I'm spending for them, it is for them and they are, it is precious. It is yeah. their time. They matters and not anybody else matter at that moment. And I think that is something that we need to aspire and try to read our children, to learn our children, to, to know what, what, what they are doing and what they are doing. Children will not tell you everything yeah. that they want to, but it is important for you to kind of look at, sometimes read them, learn, learn what it is. We take things for granted because we think as a parent, oh, they need to understand. But sometimes it is very difficult for them to understand unless we show them. Just talking doesn't help, but sometimes also showing them something actually really helps. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nana. That's, that's a good one. Uh, Shido, you raise your hand. Yes. Um, I've got a nephew. Um, what he does is when he is when he is off when he's just feeling off he is quiet and when you ask uh, if anything is wrong you'll say i'm fine and that is all he says so what we have learned to do with him is uh when we when i see him like that i just call him sit him next to me hug him and you will see that after a few minutes he is crying. He hasn't said a word, I haven't said a word, but he's just crying. And you cry himself out. And after a while, when he's cried out, we do other things. There's no asking what's wrong. It's uh, the following day, then he will then start explaining what happened. 
what was going on in his mind and, and all. So sometimes just being there also helps. Yes, thank you so very much, Chido. That's very important. Understanding the symptoms of mental health in children is very important. Withdrawal, isolation, at times it's rebellion, lack of motivation, avoidance. There are so many of them. Understanding them is key. Because at times they are reacting to something, but we we only see what they are doing at that point. I will give you an example. A, a, a mother had a son, and uh, that child was in school. And every time they went to do PE, they would change. They have the boys have to change their uni, their their um, uh, um, PE uniform. Then then when the, one boy kept on telling him, "Oh, this is your underwear. You look like a." Um, like he's a gay and that upset the boy and he so when he, whenever he went back home he was a different boy he was always very aggressive very angry quickly he goes into a rage and at times he, he has he takes out the rage on the sister or the brother now the parents we are focusing on the rage without finding out what has caused this until one day um the advice came and they looked at, you know, they began to say, this child wasn't like this, something has changed. Where did this change from? What happened? And uh, they had to organize, the mother took him out in a private place. It's okay, this is not you. What has happened? Why are you always in a rage? Why are you always angry, rebellious? And that child now revealed that this is what somebody has been telling him in school and it's upset him. So the parent had to take step and go to the school to address it. And you know, and spoke into the child and brought back his confidence. So the, the key is understanding, understanding the, 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 the background to the feelings and the actions and the symptoms we are seeing. So you will but Africa, the way we are, we don't we always think uh i don't know how to explain it we don't ever try to find out what is the problem we always think that the child has a problem and that is even a worse situation they are so as a parent i will i'll advise you try and find out your children understand who they are like nana said understand their characteristics from there you will know when there are symptoms of mental health can I say something, please? Yes, yeah, Shola, please. Just a quick word. Another thing um, children can be, do very cleverly that parents sometimes may not pick up on. I agree with the currency or maybe being really being quiet, the bed wetting, but another thing is self harming. Some mm. children cut themselves. Yeah. They cut themselves. Yeah. And and they, they will have a quick reason. They will tell you, oh, I fell. Or oh, this happened, or some, but they cut themselves. And I think if, and sometimes they will cut themselves in areas where parents may not know. It may be around their intimate area, you know, areas that normally parents can't see. But it's just something to be aware of. That absolutely, idea. absolutely, very correct. There are so many uh, signs, panic attack. You, if you are a parent and you discover at times you are coming back home. And a child is like into this kind of panic. You need to review, you need to understand why is this child panicking? Why is this child? the most important I really want us to address, and I want you to think, I, I, I will allow you to think about it on your own is why is it that your child does not have the confidence to tell you their problem and they, they want to tell it to somebody else? They feel free. They are seeking for somebody else to talk to at a very young age. What do you think? What is the what is what is the circumstance in that family? Because most of the adults are not emotionally available. We're not even emotionally intelligent yet. We don't know how we're feeling. We don't know how to articulate what's going on in our heads. And then we have all these little people who are depending on us for the love that we don't even have or we don't even have to give. So it's really, unless you're, you've been trained to recognize that, okay, this is what I, my role is as a parent. I'm a love giver. Whether I feel good or I don't feel good, these people are looking at me as their mirror on how they should behave and react socially and culturally. Well, if we're not, you know, educated in that sense, 
there will always be falling short. The kids will always be looking for love in all the wrong places. The guys will say, come, you're a part of us, you belong, we're going to listen to you, we hear you. So it's all about, like you said initially, raise yourself before you raise your kids. Yes, thank you so much, Esther. Spot on. So, okay, yeah, Nana, uh, yeah, you want to say something? Um, I will also say that lack of trust in the children, we, we, don't, we don't let them feel like they can trust us as parents. And also, if you are a, a, a separate parent, like if the parents are separate, we, we don't make sure, we don't put the children first to make sure that the children understand that they can be uh, honest to both parents. So we don't give them that confidence. You know, we, for example, if two, the parents are split and they are not in good terms, that affects the children also to kind of have the trust, thinking that they can trust their parents. So if, if it is possible for the adults who are the parents to be able to put their issues on the side and look at how they can make the children actually trust them, that will also help the children to feel like they can talk to their parents. Because children will not look outside if they think that at home they are they are free and they are happy to do something. Thank yes. you. Thank you so very much. That's very, very true. So it's very important that we African parents will learn how to listen to our children. I want to say something, please. Okay, yeah, uh, uh, Mayor, please. Yeah, another thing is like being uh, too angry with the children. When okay. we get angry with children, so like they don't want when they do something long, wrong, and then you tell, tell them that what they did is not good. So when they go outside, they want to tell someone who will listen to them and encourage them and tell them that they are fine and with assurance. So I noticed that on my children as well. Yeah. Um, I want to say something before, um, uh, please, um, uh, uh, Auntie Nana, before you come in. I want to say that when you correct, the way we correct our children is important. Yeah. Remember, we are not to punish them, we are to discipline them. Most times, we are what is in our head is to punish. So the way we tell them that they have done something wrong, we are judgmental. We, we judge them and they feel it is harsh. And once a child feels that uh, any time I open my mouth, I know they will misunderstand me, they will judge me. They may be very, very young, three years, four years, five years. But once they start feeling that way, oh, I'm going to be punished. They are already afraid of the parents. Parenting has gone beyond, let me make this child be afraid of me. I want my children to be afraid of me. When I'm coming back, everybody's running, going to hide one thing or the other. No, we have to get to that point where we, we listen to them, we let them know, respect them, I respect their opinion, you know, respect, uh, respect their emotions, and make them feel like human beings. If they do something wrong, correct them, but do it in a very, tell them this is what you did wrong, and I wouldn't want to, this is my expectation next time, and I don't hate you, and I'm not going to kill you, just tell me the truth, I love you, this, this, but don't do it again. But if a child does something and you are screaming, you are so angry that you want to raise your hand, my dear, next time they are looking for options. Uh, Atit Nana, please, you want to say something? Yeah, I also want to bring in another aspect. I mean, yeah. uh, sometimes we need to remember that we're all different. And God yeah. has blessed us with family. And that's why we say it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. If you're the type who is, um, how would I say, strict, because that's your nature. You like things black and white. Yes. So children must have somebody they can go to, that gentle aunt or that uh, uncle, who could be your brother, your sister, your, your best friend, who they can talk to. Because sometimes too, we, we have to parent from our position of strength. Yeah. There are parents who they are good at encouraging kids to give their best. Mm. And the reason I say this is when I look at my own childhood, my mother was the strict one. You dare not do something wrong. And it wasn't that she didn't love us, but you yeah. knew that you bring your report card and it's not the grade she wants. You're in big trouble. And yeah. the truth is, if she didn't push us, we wouldn't do our best. Yeah. And then in, in then you have, oh, like my uncle, he's there, he, he cut the one who gives you extra pocket money. So it's that kind of, we need to make sure that if that's who we are, we are very, very strict. Because sometimes I remember even my own children one of my children 
Mr. Impossible. I call him that. Partly because every day you have to pick him from headmaster's office. Because he, you know, but he, because he did it deliberately. He'll say, I remember he, one of his constant things was, oh, I'm doing it to wind them up. So he knew what he was doing. But you needed, and what changed for him was a teacher who did maybe, uh, who could recognize that this is a child who is not being stretched. As soon as he finished the homework, just tell no, uh, Ricardo, please sort out the computers. And he did it. Suddenly, we were no longer picking from the headmaster's office. So it's about knowing, you know, you find the person who can balance your parenting style. Oh. Because I think the danger here is that we are, they, there's too much focus on the nuclear family. And that yes. stretches us. Yes. We cannot be who we are not. Yes. You know, it is also we need to be who we are as people. Yes. Because much as, yes, we must learn the things you are saying, emotional intelligence, all these things. There are some things, it is not your nature to be cuddly, cuddly. But always you give them hugs, but you are mistress. Allow yourself to be that, but find the person who will give them, you know, medical, so that then we grow our families in a strong way. So that's yes. just what I wanted to add. No, you are, you are very, very correct. Uh, Thank you very much, all our followers on YouTube. Please don't forget, subscribe, subscribe. If you find this course very interesting, we've got comment section that we put link that you can register. It's a free course to register. But if you're having a court case at the moment or you have a regarding issues and you need this course very urgently, please contact us and we can arrange a date for you. We've got some people that have put in for private uh, lesson for this course. So it will be coming up on the 7th, 8th, 14th and 15th of May. That one, family has to pay for that because it's a private one. So if you need it urgently, you can contact us so that we'll tell you more details on how to make payments and how to join the course. It's on Saturday, 7th, Sunday, 8th, Saturday, 14th and Sunday, uh, 15th, 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. is two hours each day. So if you're among those parents or individuals that need this course very urgently, then please contact us so that you can go along with those special dates. Otherwise, just follow the link, registered, and uh, we will contact you uh, as soon as we have a free day, uh, date. If we got our funding, we're still looking for more funding to do that for free. Anyone we got funding for is going to be free course. But if you require this course urgently, then please contact us. We can put you on the next batch as soon as possible. I would like to bring uh, Madam Kemi on board now. Madam Kemi, are you ready to talk now? Uh, our, otherwise, I can bring uh, Femi Abolade. Thank you very much, Sam. Um, it's been very wonderful listening to the course. I attended this course the last time, and I must say that it was high opening. It was very enlightening. Um, parenting has never been so strategic in our lifetime. We had um, times where peer, um, children were not so intuitive. Children were not so exposed to a lot of things. Nowadays, there's this pressure, pressure from the so social media, pressure from a lot of new ideologies that are coming up. And we as parents, have now become new breed of parents. We can't afford to parent like our parents did. We cannot afford to parent like what used to happen in our age. There is a pressure, there is a con concern for a new breed of parenting. And we can only achieve this when we do practice, um, practice sharing, when we share best practices in best practices sharing, where we do best practices sharing, when we listen to how people have succeeded in this age, how people are thriving. And that's why I, um, I want to applaud the efforts of Mr. Olale Kong, right, the Apocentric Parenting Skill Course. I also want to appreciate um, Pastor Chika for always being there and standing strong. I also want to encourage all the migrants that are just coming in, you know, it's never too early to start learning about these things, even as a single person, or even when you don't have any social issue, social service issue, these are the times to begin to learn these things. 
May we all never become a victim of our ignorance in Jesus' name. <laughs> I just want to say thank you very much. Um, the Save the Woman, you're doing a very great job. And the, the skills and the knowledge that I've gotten from the last course has lived with me. I mean, I've improved the way I parent my kids, the way I discuss with them. And I'm seeing um, an improvement. I'm seeing them thriving every day thank you very much thank you very much thank you for all our followers <laughs> on youtube thank you for the comments uh as you can see that's a good topic uh fiona say thank you lots of food for thoughts true great work uh this is amazing and innovative work oh she want to said i agree fiona uh lifelong learning yes, exactly 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 uh, please help us share this with your loved ones. Let them be part of it. Or do I your adegite sit well done, sir? Uh, Fiona's identification of black children. Yes, that is exactly yeah. So I'll bring on a Femi Abolade. I think got something to say quickly uh, before we continue the course. Uh, quickly, I just want to say that just like the last speaker said, uh, right now I know that parenting is one has to be deliberate with uh, parenting. Yeah. We, we cannot leave it to chance. We cannot leave it the same way we have been doing it in the past. If truly we, we don't want to co come up with um, safeguarding issues, we don't want to come up with um, issues of uh, people snatching children. Uh, when, when I hear stories of people that this happened to, it breaks my heart. And I think causes like this, uh, is, is God answering prayers of people so that we can know exactly how to deal with issue in a different context because where we are coming from is totally different from where we are and then the children are growing up in a generation that is totally different from us so uh, the things that we are learning from this course I think it's something that we really need to uh, put into action so that we can see our children not losing our where we're coming from, but at the same time gaining in how to grow in a new environment. So uh, I want to believe that. And I want to encourage, excuse me, so many people to please enroll for these courses. Um, my, my own wife will be joining this course as soon as she comes in. And um, I want to encourage every other person to please, wherever you are, please, Take these courses very seriously. They are very important. They will help us to bring our children up in the way that we will be glad that we brought them to this country. Thank you. Thank you, Save the Woman. Thank you for bringing this up. That, that's amazing. Exactly what you said now is one of the participants in the previous course said, I quote, who said there wasn't a manual to parenting? I keep on saying there's manual. There is something. Why was this course not there years ago? Why didn't we have this course? I wish we have this course years ago. I've learned so much. It's a life saver, life saver. You said your prayer and God answers your prayer. He brought this course at the right time. That's one of the beneficiaries. And we got comment from the mayor of Middlesbrough. He said, fantastic work. Uh, that's amazing, that's amazing. So please, any local authority you find yourself, Please share this course with everyone. It's beneficial. It's a global uh, focused course to, to bring up a global child. Thank you for that. And we will continue with this course uh, again. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, as you also rightly said, uh, we're in a society now where we want to uh, be, be caught off. And parents don't want anybody to talk to their children, even in churches, and I believe in mosques as well. Um, no, nobody wants anybody to talk to their children. That negates our cultural way. That we are here doesn't mean that every of our aspect of our culture is wrong. It's like what happens among the grown-up uh, children born here. They don't believe that uh, uh, you can recommend somebody for marriage to them. They don't believe it. No, we are African. There are certain things we Africans do that are good, that we have to imbibe. Get somebody that your child relates to if you are struggling in an area. I, I, I know few children, once they do something and their parents are struggling, they say, okay, I will call Pastor Chica. Pastor Chica should speak to you. And once I speak to them, they will listen and they'll tell me the secret 
that they don't want to share with their mom or dad. Then I will relate. I say, okay, can you change this? Can we do this? Can we do this like that? So it's very, very, very important. That's how we grew up. Yes, uh, Esther, please. Thank you so uh -huh. much. Yeah. Yeah, that was so wise, Auntie Nana. Thank you so much for that contribution. People should not try to fake it or be what they're not because that's you're not congruent as a therapist because I work in authentic therapy, just helping people heal their mind. One number one thing you want to be is be your organic self. That's where you're stronger and have those sensible, trustworthy people. That's the emphasis on the trustworthiness of the people around you whom the kids can like good cop, bad cop, you guys can bounce off each other or bounce, you know, like contribute to each other. That's what I was gonna just add real quick. Okay. Thank you. No, uh, that was very that, that that's very, very, very uh important. So that um uh, um it's not the school or social workers that pick up cues from our children. Because when they pick them up. It exposes us, so we should do whatever we can to, um, you know, to make sure that we are not lacking. So what we're looking at now is what symptoms, the symptoms we see in children, and we know that there is emotional issue. Yes, brother Nam. Hello, everyone. Um, you know, one of the things, most yeah. important thing, I want to learn in this course, yeah. I will give example because sometimes during the course of training, yeah. all training sound too convincing and too easy. Yeah. But in practice, it isn't realistic or even easy to practice. Yeah. So, um, and it makes uh, parenting very difficult, I must con 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 confess. Yeah. You see, in what we are saying about uh, how we relate to the children, I hope to learn how to draw a clear boundary between being a parent and being a friend or being friends to our children. Uh -huh. This clear thin line is difficult to draw this boundary. I must give you an example. I'm a strict father strict oh. my wife is a lovable mother being emotionally connected to her children and it leads to a point that there is no boundary between being friends and my children can sometimes tell my wife shut up no crazy woman no <laughs> uh, stu stupid because they, they think my wife or their mother is just their age mate and they are playing around and uh, the, the, the last that put me into problem is seeing the eldest of my son uh, calling my wife name, stupid, idiot, because all of them are in the same age group, no boundary of being a parent and being friends. Then I was so put off and enraged that I sprang up and did some spanking in his ass. And that later metamorphosized into a very big problem. Yeah. So while we are saying the things we are saying, I hope to learn in this course how to draw this clear boundary between being a parent and being too intimate or being too friendly with these children. So I hope to learn this. This is what I want to contribute. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Nandi. What you said is so true. Uh, but uh, it, it, that's the second workshop where we are looking at understanding family values, uh, looking at understanding expectations, understanding the place and voice of children in a family, respect for children's voices. Now, what we are saying here is not that um, as a parent, you just lose it completely and the children are running the family. No. There's a place where you set boundary. That is family expectation. This is what we expect. I, you know, when being very soft, very playful with the children does not mean that as a parent, you lose who you are. You must first, every parent need to know that you are looking after these children, you are giving them direction. So not the other way around. They can suggest things, but you still have to take charge. So the, uh, we are going to look at that um, next week. But I don't know if any, um, well, any of the parents want to say something on that. Because the issue there is there should always be boundary. Having boundary does not stop us from connecting. 
you can still have a wonderful, buoyant, uh, uh, robust relationship with your children, but they have utmost respect for you. Yes, so we are going to look at that. How do we get to that point? We are, we are so free with our children. We chat with them, but we have, there are things children are looking, up, are looking at. The way you handle issues, the way you talk as a parent. If you, if you, if you talk in a way that, because the children are very intelligent. The children we are having here, the moment you give back to them, you put them in, in front of the television. That TV they are watching, at before, even three months, four months, their brain is developed so quickly. Now, if you are not emotionally intelligent, there are things that make children underlook their parents. If you cannot, let me give you an example. They have a simple homework and they ask you to help them to do it. You can't even say, okay, one plus one is two. You just, oh, go ahead, you should do it. I don't know it. Those things on the, make bring children, uh, parents down. When we, uh, in the eyes of the children. And next time when you're talking, they're looking at you, well, what does she know? And before you know it, also they want to practice what their friends do. As a mother, I had a time when my children thought, okay, even recently one of my daughters who is uh, in her, she's 23, came back home and uh, we were joking and he told daddy, I said, daddy, oh, don't be silly. We said, no, excuse me, what did you say? Don't be silly because you are 23. No way, you can't say that here. Can you take back that word? We were joking, we are all playing. But immediately she did that. We said, no, 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 that's a no-go area. Can you take the word back? She took it back. So how will you feel if we tell you that you are stupid? Do you understand? And she said, oh, yeah. I said, I want you to know we are still Africans. I know we are British, but we are Africans. We don't do that. So what, that's what we you, we you need to, while you are playing with them, while you, are op, you have open, um, is, um, you, you are open with your children, you must really know that this one is my space that my children cannot cross. And when they cross it, it's not to spank them or it's to sit them down, to say, look, I appreciate this, but I don't want to see this next time because for me, uh, as a Christian, as a pastor, how I treat my children is, there are things they don't know. They do it not deliberately. I'll bring the Bible. I say, look, the Bible says, honor your parents that you may be well with you. And what you have done now, do you think it's honorable or is it not? They will answer me that it was not honorable. Next time they won't do it. But if they just do it and nobody does something, or if you are not doing something, you do it excessively, there's a problem. It's our reaction to what they do. Opens us up or makes us very aggressive in their sight. So, but we are going to look deep into that um, uh, next week. Um, next week. I, okay. Yes. Because next week, we are meeting Saturdays and Sundays. So tomorrow, 4 p.m. Is that oh, what you mean to say? Oh, sorry. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Tomorrow, yeah. please. So we are going to be dealing on that. You know, how to be firm. How to be firm. And yet, you are friendly with your children. Your children can trust you, and yet you are very firm. They can't cross their boundary. One is also we respect them. You get back your respect. Because most times parents will done to respect, and the children have not learned to respect. Hello, Ma. Yeah. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, hi. Yes, can sir. I add something to that? Hmm. I think most of these kids, they watch some things on their on their t TV station hmm. that do disturb them, that make them react in yeah. such a way. I happen to have a three years old daughter, but recently I noticed something in her. So I decided to stay with her anytime she's watching TV. And I realized that there's some special, there's some cartoons that she watched that make her to come out and behave in some naughty way. So yep. since then, I always follow her back, don't watch this, don't watch this, don't watch that. I think that's one of the things that we parents will notice nowadays. Yes. They watch some things on that cartoon that teach them how to talk back at their parents. Yes. That is very important. I think that's, that's what... yes, that's so true. Tolu, sorry for that. That's so true. I remember when my children were growing up. There's this um a cartoon they call Horrid Henry. <laughs> Horrid Henry, I listen to it. We have they just say all sorts of you know they so abusive, so bullying somebody else and all that. 
I told them, I said, you can't watch that. Please look for something else. You can't. I had to explain to them the implication. Because the more you listen to it, you start talking like that. You start cursing on, 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 um, uh, um, um, unconsciously. And that helped. That, I think you nailed it. You nailed it, Tolu. And Nana, you want to say something? I want to add to it that um, both of you are right to make sure that you, you look at what your children are watching and also explain to your children about uh, why certain things that are said there is not in the African core value, not in, in our core value. And but when you do that, it makes the children sometimes um, listen to it. But children are children. They'll still try to go back there. But just you just go back to them and ask them, oh, what are you watching? This is interesting. Is that what you are watching? And then the more they see that you are participating in what they are watching and what they like, you see they don't like tend to go to the ones that you are telling them not to, not to be watching. So... I think it is important for us to know what they are actually going on. Like, for example, it's not only the cartoon. Also, like here in my in my house, my children are grown, but they don't watch things like Big Brother and stuff because they've seen that I never watch it. Yes. And I always told them that I, I don't think that the things that they are doing and stuff, it is good for African core value. That is the word I always use for them. It, so I don't watch it. I don't watch those things so that the children see that I am watching. So it's kind of put them off because I'm not watching and I'm not showing no interest in it. So they themselves kind of don't watch it. So sometimes the parents, children also look at what the parents are doing. And then the children think that, oh, I think I can do that. So if we don't do certain things that, we don't want our children to do in front of them. That also help. I think that, I don't know, but that is how it works for me. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Hadra. That's very good. You see, this conflict between couples also has a way of impacting the children. If, if uh, a wife is always talking down, the mother is always talking down on the man, in the presence of the children, remember they are hearing it. Very soon when the man is talking, the children are not interested. The same thing happens the other way around. So whatever we are doing, even if we have misunderstanding, do it maybe when they have gone to school or elsewhere. Whatever we do, they copy. Negative one, they copy. Positive one, it impacts on them. So remember, we looked at mental health, yeah? I just wanted to say that, yes, that children learn more from what we do than what we actually say. and. But also, some of us who are not living with our partners, my partner is deceased, unfortunately. Um, but the way you talk about your partner also matters. I know a girl who became a, a lesbian just because, um, just because uh, the mom's always like how bad the dad is, and the woman, the girl, just saw it like all men are like that. Yeah. So it's very important the narrative we give. Pastor Chick, can I ask how long do we have left for the calls, please? Actually, we have a spent, I think we, we booked it for two, six. We are, we are actually 20 minutes more. That's because we're enjoying it. <laughs> so I'm looking at you. You are the main organizer. So you tell us what to do. <laughs> yeah, so but let me wrap, let me wrap up um, where we came from. We are looking at uh, how to connect, emotional connection, that connectivity. And we I said that the foundational thing is to understand, have knowledge of mental health both in adults and in children recognize that at times things you see the actions you see from your children could be that they have emotional um or mental issues affecting them and so they are reacting certain way so the um if we understand that children at times can have those um uh, mental health issues it will help us to connect with them. It will help us to know how to help them. Listening to them, observing them, and giving them directives. We looked at uh, what is um, what's the difference between psychiatric issues and mental health issues. And we looked at psychiatric issue is the higher level of mental disturbance, <laughs> disorder, mental disorder, which uh, usually you can't just wake up and say this person has mental health, pro um, has a psychiatric problem. No, a doctor must um, 
diagnose it and is a doctor that has to treat it. But mental health issues, um, um, we can detect the symptoms. And when it is detected, there must be solution. That solution, we have uh, people at CAMH, uh, Child and Adult Mental Health Service. They are the ones who can go through with that child and the family to help the, uh, the family. So mental health affects adults as much as the children. If we understand it, we will know when a child is hyper, when a child is uh, um, uh, trying to isolate it herself or himself, when a child is having sleepless nights, they are when there's bit certain characteristics that are not regular, we'll be able to connect to know, okay, this is what is going on. Because at times when they're exhibiting that, some of us are upset with them, we punish them, we uh, we talk to them, we stigmatize them, we say that one is all, you're always like that. Like let's say a child has stammers. Africans, you know, in Africa we 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 laugh at children who stammer. Or a child that is left-handed in Africa, they will make they will they will stigmatize that child, and that exacerbates a mental health issue. Then we looked at um, risk factor. What are the risk factors? What are the risk factor risk factors in the family? We looked at a divorce, financial crisis, when there is conflict. Um, we looked at a moving house. We looked at uh, taking on new partner. And there are so many other things that affect the children. So we have to look at those, uh, whatever we are doing, let's carry the children along. When there is bereavement, when somebody is going into the hospital, I know a child whose uh, parents, whose father went to hospital and, and told the children, I will come back. I know I'm ill, but I'll come back. Unfortunately, the, the parent died. Now, uh, so any other person, and nobody explained it to the child. So when somebody else says, I'm going to the hospital, the child starts panicking. Oh, I hope this one is coming back again. So those, those things are all risk, risk factors. While we are dealing with them, let's carry the children along. It will help us. Then we looked at who can be affected. We, we, we agree that anybody can be affected. Now we are looking at intervention, intervention and support. The intervention is what we have been talking about, that when you notice these signs and symptoms, the first action you take is to take that child aside. When you pick it up and say, this is not my child, first look for a way to get them to talk. Look for a way to get them to settle. If, you, if they can't talk to you, look for somebody else. It could be their pastor. It could be their maybe one of their friends. They love the parents. They connect with the parents or an auntie and uncle let them have a chat with them to understand where they are coming from then some of them you need to go to your gp as, a, as a, somebody said or also you can tell the school so the school can refer them to camh or the gp can do that you can also uh, uh, i think you can also approach camh so it's important to know when you can re refer there's a time you need to refer when you start seeing those symptoms and you have done everything you can, it persists and try and do it early. You must refer that child to a specialist who can help the child out. And uh, then we looked at uh, the last thing, um, uh, well, we didn't go into this, as referral I'm talking about, what time is the best time to refer? Antinana, is it Antinana or Toi or Tolu? One of you said it, when to refer, when you notice a persistent issue with a child, when do you need to refer? Some of us, the first point of contact, which is not wrong, we take it to church. I had somebody, I have a, an adult who, who is having mental health problem. And um, I'm praying for her. Suddenly she called me during the week. She said, Pastor, should I throw away my medication? Should I stop taking it? I said, excuse me, am I a medical doctor? She said, no. I said, I'm a pastor. So I didn't give you medication. Go to your doctor and discuss with your doctor. I'm not that kind of pastor that will tell you to throw away your medication. What I'm ministering to you is your spiritual side and your, med your, your spiritual self side. I'm not attending to you medically. 
So I will not tell you to leave your medication because that has its own work, you know? So some of us, when we notice uh, these issues, when we notice these issues, um, the first thought is maybe some, something is uh, spiritually, there's a spiritual attack or the child is uh, affected by one demon or the other. And unfortunately, they may go to a wrong pastor who believes that. That will put you, you will collide with the law. You will collide with the law. So if you have an issue, yes, your pastor can pray with you. But don't get to the other side where you use it against the child and start giving it names. So you, can, you should refer to your GP or you can go to CAMH and they will help that child. Then the last one is... How do we promote good mental health, both in adults and in children? So I just want to three minutes uh, for us to look at that. How do we promote good mental health for adults, for yourself, for your partner or whoever, and for your children in your house? I know in schools, they try to promote it. But the best is the school starts from your home. How do we promote good mental health that everybody is sound? I will recommend that open discussion. Mommy, when you have financial challenges, instead of backing at the children because they want you to buy something special, let your children know how your financial situation. Carry them along. Because if you don't do that, they begin, it also affects them. They begin to think, okay, she is very wicked. Uh, my dad is very wicked. I know they have so much money. They are not helping me. And they block off from you. So we must start from that being open with ourselves and with our children, having a genuine discussion with them. And I call it respecting them because I have seen it work in my home right from the beginning. We attend, uh, when we have our prayers on Saturday and we are sitting down, after we finish praying, at times we tell them what is going on with our finances, with our ministry, with our business. We tell them that, oh, this business has been very slow. We need so, so, so amount in a month. But the way we are, we don't have it. And they say, wow, okay. Such a child, if you now, if they say, okay, I want, I want you to buy me uh, uh, um, trainers. They, they are the ones that will say, oh, mommy, so sorry, I understand the business. I, I understand it's not now, but when the money comes. so. That creates a balance in both the parents and the children, emotionally and mentally. There are so many other things we do. Recreating ourselves, most, most of us Africans, we don't recreate enough. We only go to the park only when the children have, you know, asked us and cried over it. It should be part of your routine. Have a schedule. Even here now as adults, now as before I, we started this, we went to the park to play tennis just for the children, put it as part of, have all those things as part of your regular schedule, you know? So because those things, when they go out and recreate, it, it removes a lot of pressure, both on you and the children. And where, where there's no pressure, there's no mental health or emotional issue in that home. So we must deliberately avoid pressure, bringing pressure from work. We must deliberately avoid them. When you go to work, no matter how hard it is, analyze it, leave it there, and come back home and enjoy your children. Let them enjoy you because they don't even understand what is going on in your office. Thank you so very much. Yeah, Esther. Thank you so much. Can we all just give Auntie a big round of applause? I know that if we allow, we will stay here for what, no, maybe three hours, but we have to respect because this is honor, you know, the integrity of your word is whether people can trust you or not. So I want to say a big thank you that we really stretched it for 30 more minutes longer. Um, but I'm sure we've got great value and I'm sure we'll come back tomorrow. I'll let um, Mr. Conrad Ola do the closing remarks. Thank you so much, ma'am. We really appreciate it. This was so fulfilling. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, every one of you. Uh, we would like to apologize for taking our time. As we all know, uh, we did a couple of things just prior to the lecture. We've scheduled this for two hours lecture, two hours course, uh, per session. 
However, because of the guests we've had for the beginning, we have to take some of those time. So we apologize for the extra time. We appreciate you. We know you've got other schedule of other activities. We do apologize for that. Uh, if you look at this box, it's there, it's e-registration form. We've sent the document to people, but we've not got much more back. However, we've changed to e-registration form. If you could please help us think, fill the form. These are the forms that we're going to use to prepare the certificates. And as well, we also have a consent form because as you know, we are recording, we are taking pictures and we will need this to uh, keep our record and also for further uh, review. So if you- Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hope you do enjoy this so far. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you are here to subscribe. And if you find this course very interesting, if you find the content very helpful, don't forget to share with your loved one. And uh, we've got the link if you want to register for the course. Uh, we've got the list. Uh, once you register and you secure a space, we will let you know and we'll let you know the exact date that the course will start. That is why we say we should give this out uh, for every one of you to be part of it and to know what the course is entails. And however, if you have any safeguarding issue at the moment, or there's a court proceeding, child protection plan, or you just feel like you want to learn this course, you want to go on this course as soon as possible, then you can pay for it. Though it is free course, but if, uh, the free course has to be covered by the funding that we received. So we're looking for sponsor. If you know anyone, any individual, that will be of great benefit to sponsor this course so that we can impact more families. Please do contact us, do contact us, do contact us. However, if you want to pay for the course privately, uh, you can as well let us know. We've got a date for those that will be paying for the course on a special uh, arrangement. The date for them will be Saturday, 7th May and Sunday, 8th May, as well as 14th and 15th of May, 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. It's two hours each of the day. Uh, if you want to know the information about the payment, please get in touch with us and we can arrange that and also give you the access that you use to join on the 7th of May for those of you that register for private to pay for it. Uh, for those that will be enrolling on free slots, please, there's a link, just click on the link of e-registration uh, to fill for course 101. Course 201 is free. That will start first week of June. We will let you know once you register as well. So, uh, Femi Abolade, do you want to say a final word before we end for today? So I want to say thank you to you once again. Thank you for joining. Please don't forget to share this page, uh, this YouTube link with your loved one. And we look forward to uh, hear from you. Please contact us. We are contact us on the details. And you can also search Save the Woman on all the social media for you to subscribe and to follow us. We've got the website. Uh, if you search Save the Woman as well, you can find our website there. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Mr. Alekon. Let me just... Uh uh sorry i i can't uh, put on my video as it is, so just manage my uh voice i uh, i think yeah the final words that uh pastor chica said which i took time to write down it's like i missed the last one but um yet i still that um in, in getting our children and training our children we need to discuss everything with them which i think is very germane when they know the source of our income, they know how much we earn, they know when we have money, they know when we don't. It, it will be easier for us to tell them when they ask for a certain thing and they, oh, now we know daddy cannot afford this or mommy cannot afford this. And then they give us later. And also that we should create time for recreation, not just once in a while when children request for it. We should put in our time to, if it's once in a month, if it's twice in a month, let's create that time. And also that they should know what goes on in the home. And finally, that we should create boundaries, boundaries in all things. Sincerely, this for me has been an eye opener. If I didn't get any other thing, these ones that I've just written down, I think they are just the 
the, the, the best in it for me. And once again, I want to say thank you for uh, being an answer to prayers to a lot of families here in this part of the world by bringing this course to, 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 to bear. And um, I pray that God will continue to help you and help every member of the team. And um, this will continue to increase and become greater than you can even ever think or imagine. Once again, thank you so much to you and to the team. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we are open to uh, partnership, to collaboration. If you know any of organization, individual philanthropists that will be of help, please don't forget to let them know of this course. Um, besides, you know, word of mouth, it goes a long way. Word of mouth goes a long way. So please help us spread this and let more people to be aware of the course. If anyone is migrating to the United Kingdom and you don't want to lose your child or you don't want to lose your children, on some mere cases, please, you need to enroll. We need to, to, to train ourselves for us to be able to train our children. And how to create a boundary is very, very important. And the course two one will be talking about parenting teenagers and maladies, challenging behaviors. So please don't forget to subscribe and to register for both course 101 and course 201.